Right, good morning, everyone. This is a special meeting of the members of the State Liquor Authority. Today is December 11, 2018. Present today are Chairman Bradley, Commissioner Ford, Commissioner Fan, General Counsel Riano at some point. Uh, in Albany is Deputy Commissioner of Licensing Held and myself, Secretary Donahue. There are two items on today's calendar. One is a request from the Council's Office for a summary suspension. The other is an application by White Plains Fine Wine Spirits, LLC, for a package store. Uh, just some uh, notes. We do have a full house here today. We also have people outside. Uh, we're going to keep the door open so they can hear. I've asked them to keep it down outside for that purpose. Or else, if you, have a, you get a phone call, please take it outside, preferably off this floor, so we're not disrupting things outside. Public bathroom is on the fourth floor. Uh, for those of you who are regulars, the next meetings of the authority are the December 19th, January 9th, and January 23rd. All right, so the first matter we're going to call is item 2470A, Rose Lounge NYC LTD, as I mentioned, it's a request from Council's office for an emergency summary order of suspension. Good morning, members. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Margarita Marcico for Council's office. Um, Council's office is requesting that the members issue a summary order of suspension as to Rose Lounge NYC doing business as Rose Lounge, which is located in Richmond Hill, New York. As the members are aware um, from the memo submitted, there was a recent shooting on December 8th um, directly in front of the licensed premise where five patrons were caught in the crossfire and shot. Um, a patron was shot in the leg, the buttocks, the left hip, the right leg, and also in the left breast. <coughs> um, just briefly, a, a timeline. As, as the members recall, the Council's office previously applied for an emergency order of suspension as a result of a shooting that occurred at this same premise on April 15th of 2018, where two patrons um, were shot. Um, they both survived their injuries. The license was suspended from April 19th, 2018 until August 20th of 2018 when the suspension was lifted. Um, I've spoken to the police department. This premise has actually been closed from August 20th, 2018 until October 27th of 2018. They've been closed. They apparently reopened on October 27th, 2018. On November 3rd, um, a female patron alleged that a male representing himself as a security guard of the license premise told her he was going to help her get a cab. Instead, he took her to a secluded area where he then punched her in the face, climbed on top of her, removed her shirt, and attempted to rape her. The complainant was able to fight the perpetrator off, and he fled the scene. I've spoken to Lieutenant Estrella, who advises that during the course of the investigation, the licensee at first uh, stated that this male perpetrator had nothing to do with the license premise, that he had no part of the license premise, had never been inside the license premise, and it was only after the detectives did a thorough video search that they actually saw the male perpetrator who had done this to her inside the license premise. Working? So, um, it's not clear what, whether he was working, but we do know that the licensee was not completely honest about this perpetrator. Um, after... Um, after that incident, there was a meeting with the police department um, <clears throat> where the owner and his brother, who apparently seems to have a lot of control over the premise, and he's actually said that he's also the owner of the premise, we're investigating that. He met with the, they met with the police department on November 9th, and the police explained to them they were very concerned about their continued use of these certain promoters that were attracting violence. Um, they had a concern about the gang affiliations of some of the uh, patrons that were attending there, and could they please stop using these promoters? Um, the licensee represented to the lieutenant and the other executives of the police department that they were going to stop with the promoters. Well, this shooting on December 8th was as a result of a party that was promoted on Instagram where an individual named uh, something Killer Cash, I believe was the name, I don't have the actual Instagram, the lieutenant wasn't able to get it to me, because he was on his phone, but um, it was it was a promoted event on December 8th, which led to this latest shooting. So I know the memo says that you know in only nine months of operation, there's been two shootings. In actuality, if you if you analyze the time that they've voluntarily closed, probably to stay out of trouble, 
Um, if you also subtract the time that the board has suspended their license, they've only been in operation about two months and they've had um, nine people shot, or I'm sorry, seven people shot. <laughs> so um, we're requesting that you summarily suspend this license. And there are also allegations of uh, no workman's comp. That's correct, um, Chairman. There's no workman's comp coverage and they have numerous fire and safety building code violations. The repeat violations, um, investigators Travali inspected them after the first shooting. He issued, you know, over 40 violations. And then if you analyze the inspection that investigators Travali did after this shooting, you'll notice that those prior violations were not corrected. Um, I believe their counsel represented that everything was corrected. In fact, investigators Travali found that they weren't corrected. Also, they have this continuing problem of using unlicensed security guards. If you notice, after the um, initial summary suspension, uh, several charges that were sustained, one of them included using an unlicensed security guard. Well, when Investigator Stravalli did the post-shooting inspection um, now on December 8th, he found that once again they have unlicensed security guards. And I would note that they don't seem to be unsophisticated. They've apparently hired a retired captain from the 102 precinct, which is actually the local precinct, to advise them on these security matter matters. So I'm kind of befuddled as to how they're making these basic mistakes of continuing to attract violence, continuing to use these promoters, not ensuring that they have licensed security guards, you know, resulting in seven people being injured. What um, were the victims of this most recent shooting in the bar beforehand? Did this start in the bar? Um, I did not have the opportunity to speak to um, the assigned Detective Smith. Um, but it's my understanding that it's related. I, I believe that I spoke to the lieutenant and he advised that they have video which has no audio, but you see people directly before the shooting um, scattering inside the licensed premise going outside to the exit. Then there's a crowd directly in front of the premise so they can't flee. So then there's a reverse stampede back into the premise. After the shots are fired. After the shots are fired. You know, this is... Okay. Failure to you know supervise the front. They should have you know scattered the crowd. It was just it's just a very dangerous situation, and they've only been in operation you know about two and a half months. Do you have it in front of you what their hours are, what they're allowed to operate? Um, let's see. <clears throat> these these instances occurred close to four o'clock. Were they allowed to stay open to four? Yes, I believe they were. I believe they were allowed. You know they're permitted to have a lot of they're permitted to have dancing, live music, DJs. Recorded music. I believe they have standard hours till four in the morning. I think they open Thursday, Friday, Saturday, ten to four. Yes. I don't want to ask why you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, th they had a party uh, a couple of days after <clears throat> being licensed, after opening, that they were advised by the police not to do it. How do how did the police know that they were going to have a party? Um, so is yes. this through this their consultant that you talked about? No, apparently the intel unit advised the police department that this party was going to have confirmed uh, blood gang members. It was in honor of a deceased blood gang member, yep. and so that's why the uh, the police spoke to you know the licensee and asked them to please not have that. And with regard to the gang affiliations, uh, the lieutenant did tell me that with regard to this recent shooting on December 8th, um, he observed the video, and based on his training and experience, people standing in the crowd were, were using gang signals with our hands. Okay. And he recognized them as gang signals. So it appears that the problem's continuing with the gang affiliated. Okay. All right. Ready to vote? Yes. Commissioner Fan. Um, as council mentioned, um, it really have only been in operation in a total of 13 weeks. Um, seven people shot, one attempted rape, fire code violations, unlicensed security guard, um, from my own research, I see that they really are focused on promotional events, and despite what they've said to the police, it doesn't seem like they plan to change their method of um, operation. And for being open only three days a week, it seems like they um, want to overcrowd the place and habitually d does that. So. Due to the threat to public health, safety, and welfare, I vote to summarily suspend this license. Commissioner Ford? Uh, <clears throat> based on all that, <clears throat> that Commissioner Fan just noted, <clears throat> excuse me, also note 67 inspection violations coincidentally on the day of uh, this latest shooting. Um, most of the guards were unregistered. They had more guards than they were authorized for, as a matter of fact. Uh, also numerous safety violations, uh, uh, blocked exits, uh, blocked fire extinguishers, uh, defective alarms, defective wiring. Uh, all of that just adds up for a, a threat to the public uh, safety and convenience. So I, 
I vote to suspend. I vote to suspend as well on the same grounds. Thank you. All right, the next item, the only other item on the calendar is 2470, White Plains Fine Wine and Spirits, LLC. As you can see, we have individuals here in New York as well as Albany and Buffalo. We're going to call two speakers first, and then we'll proceed at the chairman's discretion as far as... Well, let me put, let the applicant put their name on the record first, okay. and then we'll let the uh, assembly member say her piece. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. Teresa Russo on behalf of White Plains Fine Wine and Spirits, and I'm joined by the applicant, Robert Trone. Okay. The applicant. Thank you. Thank you. So the way this is, is going to go to uh, this, we have, I, I think, just one assembly member. We have Assembly Member Paulin, and we have a representative from Senator Carlucci's office. Okay, so they can both come up, but we're going to let the opposition go first. Um, I know that the opposition has an attorney, or, or most of the opposition, the nearby opposition, has an attorney representing them, Mr. Mailer. So he's going to do the, the majority of the opposition. Everyone here that owns a liquor store that's here in opposition will be allowed to put their name on the record. The, only the four closest stores are going to be able to, to speak um, about this application. But assembly member, if you'd like to. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. So thank you for the opportunity to present my position regarding the application by, wine, by, by White Plains Fine Wine and Spirits, also known as Total Wine, to open a second store in Hartsdale, New York. I am opposed to approving this application. My position is based on three factors, New York State statute, state liquor authority guidelines, and most importantly, the human factor. First, New York State statute, as you know, limits an individual or entity to operate only one liquor store in the state. Total Wine is attempting to circumvent this statute by obtaining a license to open a second store in Hartsdale, New York. I support the intent of the statute, which recognizes that multiple stores have the unique ability to control the market and dictate the availability of certain brands, eventually driving the competition out of business. Based on this statute alone, Total Wine should be disqualified from opening another store anywhere in New York State. Secondly, your own guidelines establish that applications for package and wine stores are determined based on public convenience and advantage. To make this determination, the authority considers whether the area is adequately served by the existing package stores. It is very clear that Westchester County and this part of the county in particular is adequately served by the existing package stores. The county has a total of 195 liquor stores, 19 stores within two miles from the center of Hartsdale, 34 stores within three miles, and 70 stores within five miles. All of these stores are well under the 50, 50 mile radius that Total Wine claims as its draw and will be at risk of losing business or closing. The third and most compelling reason I'm opposing this application is the human factor. Many, if not most, of these liquor stores are mom and pop or family-owned stores that have served their respective communities for many years. These local merchants have become part of the community. They support the schools, sports teams, not-for-profit organizations, including the Rotary and Lions Club. People trust and expect that they know their wines and that they are not overcharging or selling them an inferior product. This trust is built on personal relationships. <laughs> Others are newcomers taking risks that they have found the right community in which to invest, to earn a living and raise a family. In order to be successful, they need to become part of the community, get to know their customers and provide quality of service that their savvy customers have come to expect. This is hard to do but at exactly what these merchants are attempting in an already competitive business environment. By approving this application, you're putting all of these merchants at risk of losing their financial investment, limiting choice, and leaving another empty storefront. For all of these reasons, I'm asking the, you to reject the application submitted by White Plains Fine Wine and Spirits Total Wine to open a second store in Hartsdale, New York. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to come down here. Would the representative of Senator, do you guys have any questions? Should I leave this somewhere? 
Or uh, I think we have a copy of it. Is, is that your letter? Um, it, I have. I sent a letter. Oh, you're welcome to hand that up if you want to. You can just okay. hand it right to the commissioner. Okay. Is the representative from Senator Carlucci's office in the room? Why don't you come up? Good morning, uh, Chairman and uh, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Daniel Cohen, and I am Director of Constituent Services for Senator David Carlucci, 38th Senate District. I would like to read um, a letter that was addressed to Chairman Bradley that was submitted on September 18th. I hope that actually ever arrived. We don't know how uh, reliable the Postal Service is these days, mind you, but... Uh, no, we did get it. <laughs> uh, so I'd just like to read it again. Uh, Dear Chairman Bradley, I am the Senator for the 38th Senate District, representing Ossining and Briarcliff Manor in Westchester County as well as the towns of Clarkstown, Orangetown, and Ramapo in Rockland County. I'm writing in opposition to Total Wine's application for a package store license to operate a store in Hartsdale, New York. I strongly share the concerns of my constituents, whose livelihoods would be threatened by the uh, insurgence of big box wine and spirit stores like Total. There are already almost 200 package stores in Westchester County, and almost every one of these are run by a mom and pop who live in the same community and operate right on their main street. Every one of those mom and pop proprietors will have their very existence threatened by the arrival of a big box wine store. Furthermore, with so many stores across my district and throughout Westchester, it's hard to see a need for one of these gigantic stores. Residents and tourists alike already have plenty of convenient access to both wine and spirits. In view of the foregoing, I respectfully request that the State Liquor Authority deny this application. I appreciate your consideration of this important matter, Senator David Carlucci. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mailer, how do you want to do this? Do you want to bring your people up first or? Yeah, let me just, just make a statement and then I'll, yes, that's, I want. Uh, Martin Mailer, Mailer Musemi, uh, in opposition to the uh, application of uh, White Plains uh, Fine Wines and Spirits. Um, I represent approximately 35 uh, different uh, retailers throughout the state, three of which are within the, the uh, five which you asked for uh, their, uh, their gross sales. Um, I'd just like to say a couple of things, and then I'd like to have them introduce themselves, but I'd like them to add one thing to what you suggested, and that is uh, they're going to give their name, they're going to give their address, and they're going to give the SKUs that they have of New York product, because I think that's going to become okay. uh, very relevant to, to the entire discussion. But I, i just li like to say uh, one or two other things and then let them come up. And I also have somebody uh, from a Westchester store, which I'd like to be able to, uh, uh, oh, sorry, from the uh, uh, Westbury store, uh, stores that that have already had the experience of total, just to get up for a minute and explain her position. But um, I'd like to say, on behalf of these retailers who really knocked themselves out, not only did you have uh, the, the representative of the assemblywoman uh, speak, you had about 28 other mayors and, and uh, assembly people, including uh, the, the head of the Senate right now, uh, uh, majority leader uh, to be. Uh, yes, we have an. Uh, un it's in the record, but we have uh, numerous letters from elected right. officials in the Westchester area. Which is something. All in opposition, other than, I believe, one. Well, but the point is, and, you know, I come, up before, I come before you just about every other, uh, just about at every meeting that you have, and uh, just to have one or two come up and say something is astounding, and you, and you react to that. To have 29 of them, uh, th there seems to be something up with, with an application of this type. Uh, but And I would like to thank the retailers who, who alerted these officials uh, and who, who responded uh, in the way they did. Um, so at this point, I, I would like to just have these people come up in no particular order, and uh, the, the three that I have that are within the five uh, will get up and say, if you have any questions to them, they'll answer, but they're, they're expecting me to uh, act on their behalf. And I'd just like to note that there is another attorney here who represents the closest door, and I suppose he will say something as well. Okay. Um, why not, so not just your 35. Anybody that owns a liquor store that's in opposition can come up and put their name on the record. The ones that you're referring to, Mr. Miller, just tell them to do their SKUs at the time they need to. If you know your SKUs, otherwise you can put them on as well, yeah. of New York products. Right. I, I would like anybody that, that comes up here to give their SKUs of, of New York products. Okay. So, but everybody get up at once. I'm not waiting. This isn't a for the line. Please. Yeah, it's not going to be an invitation that we can continue. Go ahead. My name is Sunil Karana from Westchester Wine Warehouse. I'm one of the five closest stores to the applicant's uh, store. Uh, we carry 171 New York SKUs, and I'm represented by Mr. Martin Mailer. Thank you. Thank you. How you doing? Uh, Andrew Petrini, uh, my store's in Thornwood. Uh, we carry around 75 New York uh, SKUs, and I'm represented by this gentleman. Thank you. 
My name is Joseph Chinese. I own Liquor Fellows in Yonkers on Central Avenue, and we have over 50 SKUs in New York State, and I'm a representative. My name is Sham Dandjakhed. I own a store in White Plains Carhartt Wine and Liquors. I'm represented by Martin Mailer. I have 20 SKUs. I have an 800 square foot store. I'm Don Zachariah. My son, Jeff Zachariah, of Zachy's Wines in Scarsdale. We have 120 SKUs of New York State wines. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. T. Armigan, Tarrytown Bottle Shop, uh, about 900 square feet, and I have about 20 SKUs. All right. Dean Moretta, Vintology Wine and Spirits. Uh, I have a 900 square foot store in Scarsdale, and I have about 20 SKUs of New York State product. Thank you. Jillian Hines, HV Liquors. I have about 300 SKUs in total, and we have over 10 SKUs of New York State products. Dodd Farber, uh, Millwood, New York, Dodge Liquor. I have 1,400 square feet. I have around over 50 uh, SKUs in New York State's wines. <coughs> and I'm also represented by Mr. Mailer. Thank you. Charles Cardella, Cardella Wines and Liquors and Ossining. I probably have 40 SKUs in New York, wine, New York products. Michael Noletti, Soundtrack Liquor Pantry in Mamarnik. I have uh, about 30 wines and spirits from New York State. God, can we hold on just for a second, please? Go ahead. Um, Roger Maxson, Putnam Avenue, Porchester, New York, Varmax Liquor Pantry. This is my daughter, Tracy Maxson. Uh, we have approximately 70 SKUs, been in business since 1979. Thank you. Karen Falkowski, K&W Liquors, Franklin Square, New York. I have a 5,000 square foot selling floor, and I carry over 60 SKUs. Thank you. Brenda Pallier, Bottles on Broadway in Massapequa, 1,500 square foot store, over 20 SKUs. How many? I missed you. I'm sorry. 20. My name is uh, Anthony Darpino. I own the Harrison Wine Vault in Harrison, New York. I currently have 30 SKUs of New York State product. Thank you. Angelo Martelli, Fairway Wines and Spirits. We have about 150 SKUs of New York State product. And where are you located? Pella Manor. Thank you. I tell you, uh, my name is David Chen. I own the liquor store in White Plains. Uh, store name is Chen Discount and the Wines. I own the I mean, we all have the, the like 15, over 15, like the USA Paris. Thank you. New Chevrolet Wine and Liquor, West Harrison. I carry about 40 in the USA products. Central Warehouse Wine and Liquor Store, and I'm carrying 60 New York products. Where are you located? Uh, Young 25 Central Park Avenue. In what city? Uh, younger. Mm -hmm. Thank you. B&J Liquors INC is located on Mount Vernon. Um, I represent the 30s of New York State products. Hello, my name is Chen, and I own the Elmsor Wine Spirits in Elmsor, New York. I own the 45, about 45 SKUs. New York wines. Thank you. Ford in Motion, my wife Wendy. We own Van Wick Liquors in Croton on Hudson. We have 110 SKUs of New York State products. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Victor Costa. I own McLean Wine and Liquors for the last 36 years. I have approximately 30 SKUs of New York State products. My name is John Volpe from the Wine Guy Wine and Spirits in Smithtown, New York, and we're proud to carry over 200 SKUs in New York products. Thank you. Scott Kemick, Grape Culture. We're in St. James, New York, and we have over 70 SKUs of Long Island, uh, New York and Long Island wines. Richard Mora from Mora's Fine Wines. Been there over 30 years. I have 250 SKUs of New York State and Long Island wines, plus gin, whiskey, and vodka. Tony Russo, Aries Wine and Spirits in White Plains. Um, 
I have over 70 SKUs of New York State products. Can you give us one of the books? Um, I have been in business for approximately 30 years, a little more than that. Uh, my sales the last five or six years have been uh, flat. Uh, I feel pretty uh, confident that if uh, license is granted, uh, that I'll be out of business in a very short time. Okay, what was the name of your store? Aries Wine and Spirits. Okay, thank you. My name is Robert Osu Jr. of Alcove Wine and Liquor uh, at Yonkers, New York, Tuckahoe Road. I carry 30% um, of New York State SKU. Products. How many? 30%. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Shahir Brewster, owner of Apricots and Honey Wine and Spirits. I carry 75 New York wine SKUs and 35 spirits. Thanks. Linda Catroni, Captain's Wine and Spirits in Ordsley, New York. Um, wine and Spirits, approximately 25 SKUs. My name is Nehal Wasani. I am uh, have a liquor store called Sleep and Harry Liquor Store. I have over 75 SKU, call it every Laurel Lake, Pamanak, every Long Island, Raphael, everybody. And our first priority, anybody walk in as a customer, ask for the uh, gift item or anything, we always say support our local wine. Every time we sell a lot of gift set as a local wine to represent our Long Island. Thank you. And even our gift uh, bag, we uh, just recently printed the bag for four pack, and that one side is a uh, I love New York, support our local. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Roshan Ali Virani. I'm the owner of uh, RNA Wine World Inc. in uh, 690 McLean Avenue, Yonkers. I carry the Long Island wines and spirit. And um, my sales are consistently, you know, the same for the last three, four years. So you want to foreclose this, Mr. Miller? No. Th th thank you. That's okay. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Fausto Giles. I'm representing Midway Wines, and we have 75 uh, SKUs from New York State. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, my name is Steven Nyberg. I work at uh, Green Lane in, in I mean, Wine Bazaar, sorry, in New Rochelle, and uh, we have about 50 um, New York SKUs. Thanks. Thank you. My name is Fatima Herrera from Quarter Horse over in Yonkers. We have over 50 New York SKUs, been there about 20 years, make it a point to take my team to visit New York State wineries every year and support. Um, hashtag everything New York. Thank you. Um, I'm Paige Donahue. I also work at Quarter Horse. I've been there 17 years. Uh, we do make a point to go to, to the Long Island vineyards every year. We've been uh, twice last year and the year before up to the New York State vineyards, all of our team members. So we do like to support New York State wines. Thank, Thank you. Sarah Fritzing from Terrace Liquor Depot. I slip Terrace. I have over. 150 SKUs from New York State, including wines, liquor, and ciders. Where are you located? I slept Terrace, and since they opened up store in Westbury. And we're going to hear about that. Thank you. Thank you. Bina Gupta from the Wine Market of New Hyde Park. We've been there for 13 years. We have uh, total SKUs, 3,500, out of which 50 are from New York State. And since last year, total wines has really affected our business. Thank you. I'm Sita Saran from Yonkers. I'm in business for the past 35 years, retailing liquor. I know we'll be highly affected by this uh, major stories coming in. Our sales right now is very stagnant. And do you sell any New York products? Yes. I Approximately do. how many? About 20% of New York products. Okay, thank you. My name is Raka Lariza, store owner, 24 years from Lena Park Wines. Uh, and we care, we have about 50 SKUs, New York State wines. 
My name is Shazad Varani. I have a liquor store in Yonkers. Uh, I have about 35 SKUs that sell uh, wines and liquors from New York State. What's the name of your store? Why don't you go last? Wines and Liquors. Lakshmi Masan from Manor House Cellar in Chelsea, New York. I sell over 160 New York State SKUs. My name is Roy Leo, uh, Old Country Wine and Liquor from Nassau County, uh, 24 square, uh, 2400 square feet. We carry around the 30 kinds of New York <coughs> products. Yeah. Thank you. That's it. Good morning, Chairman. My name is Sean Lee Huang. I'm from Plainview, uh, New York. My store is a unique wine. I carry about 30 SKU from uh, New York State. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how are you? Uh, Smith Town Liquor. Thank you. So, Mr. Mayor, why don't we let uh, the Hartsdale go? Good morning, Jonathan Schloss of the law firm of Schloss and Schloss PLLC. I'm here with my client, Linda Jacopelli. Can you just, I'm trying to make it so they can hear in a, in, no, you can stand up there. I want them to hear outside, so try sure. to. My client, Linda Speak into the microphone is the owner of can. Hartsdale Wine Shop, which is uh, the store that's situated approximately 60 feet from the proposed applicant. Um, Ms. Jacopelli, uh, ha how many uh, New York SKUs do you carry? We have about 40 SKUs of New York State wine. All right. Do you want to do your presentation now, or do you want to? I can follow, Mr. Mayor. Oh, all right. Okay. I would like to just bring one other person up because, uh, as the chairman has pointed out. Oh, wait, wait, we have, I, I'm sorry, I neglected, as oh. Commissioner Fan just <laughs> indicated, I neglected Albany and Buffalo. So if you are a liquor store owner in an opposition, please state your name and um, how many SKUs. Let's go Buffalo first. Hi, my name is Leslie Hubach. I own Gate Circle Wine and Liquor Store. I'm third generation. We have about 300 SKUs of New York wines and spirits. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Shannon Kerskallen in Ellicottville, New York, and we have about 60 New York State uh, wines and liquors. Thank you. Jackie, can you order them in Albany in a line and have them come up? Sure. You just, liquor store owners, just come up, sure. state your name. Mark and Sharon O'Callaghan, Exit 9, Wine and Liquor Warehouse, and we have over 700 New York State uh, wine, spirits, and ciders. Thank you. Next. Next. Anybody, any other liquor store? Yep. Yep. Gail Brophy, Purdue's Liquor Store. I've been in business for 55 years. We carry probably at least 200 New York State wine and spirits. Thank you. Marwan Goswami from Eastside Wine and Spirits, Saratoga Spring. We have almost 170 uh, New York wine and spirits in the stores. We are only 2,000 square feet. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve Carpenter, Liquor Wine Warehouse in Pasadena, New York. We carry over 250 SKUs of New York State wine and spirits. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Calabrini is owner of Corbin Wine, Corbin, New York, uh, 1,300 square feet. Um, about 150 SPUs of New York State wine products. Also president of the New York State Liquor Store Association. And as a support, we are uh, of denial of this uh, application of total wine in the upstate market. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Todd Usler, Upstate Wine and Spirits, Del Mar, New York, um, about 7,900 square feet. And we have about 200 SQs of New York State wines. Is everybody? We're all set here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I just, I want one other retailer company, but I just want to uh, say that I, I told these retailers to limit their comments, but they, not only do they carry the product, they support the product, and they have wine education classes, and they, they have the tastings for these New York products, because they believe in the product, they understand what the product means to the state of New York, and they are all <laughs> in tremendous support of continuing uh, New York products. I mean, if you do real quick math, the total number of people that came up here uh, amounts to about 2,000 SKUs of, of uh, New York product. Obviously, there's overlap as to uh, what they carry, but the point is uh, they carry- Well, some are in Buffalo. <laughs> well, some are in Buffalo, but I'm saying, but even, even the ones from down here, it comes to about 200 SKUs. But I'd, I'd like to bring up a, a, someone by the name of Roseanne Cobb who owns a store, and she can give a very brief story as to what happened when Westbury 
open because she's one of the four closest stores to Westbury, and I would just like her to explain. I've, I've detailed this in my written presentation, but this is a human being that had to let go two people, has many other people on limited hours because of what happened to Total. So I'd just like her to explain what happened. <laughs> Hi, I'm Roseanne Kalb from Wheatley Hills Liquors in Westbury. My store is located less than a mile from the Total Wine in Westbury. I've been in business for 24 years. Um, I carry 130 SKUs of New York products. Since Total Wine in Westbury was granted a license, my business has been severely impacted negatively. Um, my sales are down between 30 and 40% and the figure keeps growing. I've been forced to reduce costs by letting long-term employees go and reducing hours for others. Though my prices have always been very competitive, Total Wine heavily advertises and sells most name brand products at cost, which I can only surmise they're able to do because of their tremendous buying power nationally. If they're granted another license in New York, it will no doubt destroy our industry of small business owners like me and put more people at work. Thank you. All right, I, I basically like to say me too and, and go with what uh, the assemblywoman said with the beginning, but I'd like to elaborate a little bit. I figured you would. Thank you. <laughs> uh, th this, in a sense, is very easy. I, as you know, I was either part of this place or I've, I've heard this for over 43 years. Um, the state of New York, through the Liquor Authority, has set up a uh, system of judging whether a new store should be uh, allowed into a certain area. You know all the criteria, um, sales of the existing stores, whether there's an increase in population, how far the stores are from the other store, um, whether there's uh, any increases in, 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 in re residential building or building of, of the sort, uh, and uh, what the other stores have done uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, when I first started this with Westbury, we only went with the five closest stores, and then we were told that they have a quote-unquote destination store that will reach out anywhere between 30 and 50 miles and bring in people that uh, had not, uh, would not have ordinarily come into the neighborhood. But that's not what the New York State Liquor Authority is all about, nor, nor is it what the Alcoholic Beverage Control Law is all about. The reason this is just about the only license that has to come before the members, it's just about every other license, the License Bureau, uh, with the exception of certain situations, handles on their own. Uh, and the reason for that is that the state of New York, because of the, because of the heart of the Alcoholic Beverage Control Law, Section 2, uh, wanted the, the new stores, when they came into existence, when repeal uh, came, uh, was, uh, was lifted uh, back in 1932, was to uh, adhere to temperance and obedience to law. There was to be no overstimulation of the market. And the New York State Liquor Authority uh, designed uh, this, this, this plan, the, these, these criteria. And what you've just heard are 35, 40, however many stores just got up and, and expressed the fact that they are mom and pops, just as the Assemblywoman uh, stated, as per the way the way the three of you handle this thing and your predecessors have handled this thing. If a store comes into an area and it completely disrupts the equilibrium of what's going on, you don't allow it. If a, if a store is going to undercut uh, the existing um, uh, 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 prices that are, that are set, you don't allow it. You don't want, this is a very volatile product. A, a total is probably gonna come up here and say, we're all for the public, we're all for the consumer, that's what we're about. Nonsense, they're all for total. And that's what Total is all about. You walk into their store because you saw an ad that says that they're selling a very popular brand at cost or near cost. They're going to tell you they train their employees. They most certainly do train their employees. They want their employees to move you away from the, uh, from the national brands where they don't make money. They have many off brands that you don't the public doesn't necessarily know about. They, they make a very strong pitch about how you should really try this stuff because it's much better than the national brand, and that's where they make their markup. You just heard uh, allegations about maybe on the national level they make up uh, the fact that they don't make it in New York, maybe in Maryland, maybe in Texas, maybe in Florida, maybe in some other state where they're also in some deal maybe arranged where, where they, can, they can make that up. Uh, that's for the liquor authority to determine at, at, at a different time. Right now, you have a situation that's very simple. All the indicia 
everything is, is down. The five closest stores, they're basically fat, flat. Some go up, some go down. But as I added up the numbers, the numbers actually total, for, uh, the, the, the total amount uh, per year has gone down from 2014 to present um, in the five closest stores. I learned my lesson from the first time that, that a total made a presentation before you because they started talking about this destination uh, thing of theirs. And I now reached out throughout Westchester County and I came up with at least 25 other stores that were willing to give their, their gross sales. And lo and behold, it's the same thing as the, the local stores. Some go up, some go down, there's a pie. That pie uh, of the stores that I have is approximately, was approximately 200 million at when it started. It's gone down almost a million dollars over the, over the, uh, the uh, three or four years that, that I asked for the uh, total sales. What I'm saying is this pie, total is not going to add to the pie. They're going to take pieces away from those existing stores to the point where those stores will not have uh, the employees that they once had, even though Total say, will say that we're, at, we're going to add uh, employees to the situation. We're going to bring in people from other areas. They're not. They're not. Westchester um, has, has chugged along very, very comfortably with the stores that, they, that you've allowed. I've shown you in the presentation that I made that throughout uh, the county of Westchester, uh, the population trends have not gone, out, have not gone up and you've denied uh, licenses uh, throughout, throughout all areas of Westchester. Uh, the Hartsdale area itself has experienced no great increase in population. Uh, Westchester County has not experienced any increase in population. But I, I learned from the first time with Westbury, so I went out 20 miles. And if you go out 20 miles, it encompasses the Bronx, it encompasses Nassau County, it encompasses uh, uh, parts of New Jersey, et cetera. Um, so I, I did, uh, I asked that uh, demographics be drawn for them. Again, there's no great increase in the population going out 20 miles in any, in any direction. You, you said it best yourselves. The members of the authority said it best themselves. This is the second time that Robert Trone is coming before you and asking that a total store be allowed uh, to exist uh, in, in, in this case in the area of Westchester. But you said when they, when they uh, try to have a store in, um, in Stony Brook that you can't give the same um, explanation that you gave for Westbury. Westbury, you said, was a destination store. Westbury, you said, would be carrying unique uh, products to the point, New York products. Uh, and there was an over-exaggeration in, in that instance, too. When, when the Westbury store first came before you, they said they were going to carry approximately 3,500 SKUs of, of their product. I believe the, the current application is down to about 900 or 1,000. Um, but the, the fact that they can have those numbers or, or claim those numbers is because you're taking or they're taking what, what is in existence, meaning 2,500 square feet, 3,000 square feet, maybe one store is as high as 10,000 square feet, but they're doubling that. They're, they're actually doubling that for this one store. And percentage-wise, if they have nine, assuming they do have the 900 SKUs of, of the New York product, which, by the way, just doesn't come very easily. I mean, in terms of the Finger Lakes, many of those Many of those uh, wineries up there uh, basically are road stands. I mean, they, they don't have enough product to ship. They don't have enough product to give to, to liquor stores. So a lot of those products are being sold directly by the wineries because they, they, they have no means of distribution outside of their, their, their immediate areas. So it, it, it Total will make these claims. They will say how much they are for the public. No, they are for Total, and they are for Total alone to the tune of $2.5 billion nationally. So every piece of the public convenience and advantage puzzle. When you look at it, there isn't one thing the total can say that will uh, add to, to an increase. And by the way, when... Can't they be both? Can't they be for the consumer as well as for themselves? Isn't no. that what everybody in this room is about? No. No, they can't be... They're going to... No, I, I just explained what their method of operation is. You walk in that store because you've just seen an ad for, uh, for Total, which says Johnny Walker Black goes for I'm going to say, I don't know what it is, but $110, let's say. And somebody says, gee, that, that's, that's about as low as I've ever seen that product. Can I have Johnny Walker Black? They probably do have Johnny Walker Black on the shelf, but they don't want you to buy Johnny no, Walker Black. No, I get Black. that, but they want, and what they're selling them is presumably a cheaper product, that, exactly monetarily right. cheaper. Monetarily cheaper. Well, what the market. quality is, I have no idea. But, but they, No, they're going to say that it's equal or better than the, than the quality of the... But uh, if it isn't, the consumer's not going to come back. But you know what? 
with all due respect to the consumer, I don't know how sophisticated they are in the first place. I mean, many of them rely on these stores to tell them, to suggest to them that, hey, you know, I'm having this for dinner. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to <coughs> uh, uh, complement that with some sort of uh, product. So they rely heavily, which is another factor. All of these stores, the ones that are in existence, most of them, I'm not going to say every one of them, but most of them, the people live in the area. They know their customers. They see them every day. They, um, they, they establish a establish a relationship with these people, they, they, they sponsor the Little League team, they do what has to be done so that, that the public becomes part of their, of their, 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 their total sales experience. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is what you set up. This is what you wanted. You didn't want some behemoth to come in and destroy the market, to, to uh, have these stores go out of business. And believe me, many of these stores will be going out of business if Total is allowed to, to have its, uh, its way. But Again, using that the, the criteria that you set up, oh, I didn't the, set it up. Well, no, 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 no. I'm not talking. Well, I mean, but you, but you've carried through. I mean, press yeah, and right. press. No, I, I follow the law, no, but, but I had not, nothing to do with setting it up. No, I understand that. But, 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 you, as as a, as a loyal uh, employee and administrator of of the state liquor authority, you recognize what the criteria is, and you live up to that. Um, you said you the, the commissioners said in their reasons for disapproval that they can't make that claim. That Stony Brook, uh, when 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 it came before you, is about 20, 30 miles from from Westbury, and th th you can't make that same claim about being a destination store, about carrying these unique products, because Westbury is already carrying those products. And as I pointed out in my written presentation, take East and West and substitute North and South, and we have the same situation. They are within 20 miles. The, the um, the uh, White Plains store is within 20 miles of the Westbury store. What's even more unique is that there's a store to the west of them uh, in, in Connecticut, which is a total store in Connecticut, which is also 20 miles within, uh, within the distance of, uh, of White Plains. They're looking to surround <laughs> these areas and, and wipe out whatever is in existence uh, that, that's, that's there, um, right, there right now. This is not what this is all about. This is not a meat and, pota meat and potato product. It's a volatile product th uh, that, that has to be, um, that has to be uh, looked at very carefully, has to be controlled very carefully. You have, you have groups like MAD getting up all the time and saying that there's an overstimulation of, of, of alcohol that leads to problems. You have police groups coming to you telling you that we have tremendous problems with, with alcohol. Um, the, these, the people that sit in this, this room uh, right now are very aware of that. They know who their people are within their areas. They want to do the right thing. They want to dispense this, prob this, this product uh, properly, and they've been able to do it. That's the public convenience and advantage side of this thing. I also have um, a lot to say about Total and how they operate in other states. I've detailed that uh, in my, pres my written presentation, so I'm not going to bore you with, um, with repeating uh, the fact that wherever state they go into, they seem to have tremendous fines, New Jersey being a million dollars, and Pennsylvania, that are, they, they've had all, they had all sorts of problems. Texas, they've had all sorts of problems. Texas is an interesting state because what was said by the assemblywoman has some bearing. Obviously, I can't come before you. I can't do the investigation that you can do. But Texas did an investigation of, of total. And at the end of the day, because of their restrictions on how many licenses you, you can have and who's supposed to go on the license, they determined that something called RSSI, the mother load of, of all the total uh, uh, stores, the, the, the central depot, if you will, that they had to go on the license. The, the RSSI had to go on a Texas license. Now, if RSSI is, is told that it has to go on the Westbury license, we could all get out of here in about two minutes because that means that the entire Trone family is within that, that RSSI. And if they're all within that RSSI... Why were they told to be on the license? Be, because I think they did... I, again, I, they wouldn't reveal to me their, their inner investigation. But it wasn't a case? It was a, a written decision or anything? It was a... It was, it was, what had happened was there was litigation. By, by local groups. And um, Total withdrew its application as presented. I don't know which Trone or, or you know, which one said they were the one going on the license. But at the end of the day, both the individual Trone, whichever one it was, and RSSI had to go on the license at the same time. I mean, I would ask that the Liquor Authority look into this. I would ask that the Liquor Authority look into the entire um, uh, way RSSI does business vis-a-vis -vis the Trones, uh, they, are the, they are the mother company of everything. Everybody is within RSSI, and, and I, I submit that if you look deep enough, you will see that the connection between all the Trones and all of the totals 
are, are very much related. You can't divorce one from the other. Um, I had this discussion very briefly with, with the chairman, and I believe uh, Commissioner Ford, the first time with Westbury, but I was stopped very quickly, and right, rightfully so, because it was the only total that was before you at the time. Now this is the second total that's before you. Um, if you add all of this up, if you add up the character of the person that you are um, looking, that's looking to get licensed and his problems in other states, if you look at the public convenience and advantage, which is, which is it's simple, it's right there. Uh, by the way, they're probably going to say through whatever machinations that what, is, what has been said out here about uh, lost sales or, or declining sales is not true. They actually had the nerve to, uh, to say that the Westbury situation was a store that was about uh, three or 400 feet away from, from the store that uh, you, you eventually uh, granted. And they were saying things like, the way our figures uh, look at it, they're actually going to go up in sales. Well, guess what? I got their actual sales figures for the past year. They've gone down $6 million in the one year the total was open in Westbury. They're going to tell you they're not a discounter, yet I've already stated to you, I don't know how many brands they sell at cost, the popular brands anyway. Um, we have people sitting in the audience, they're going to tell you about the fine array of wines, et cetera, that they have. I mean, if we wanted to stay here for the next two or three hours, we have some of the best wine shops in all of the United States sitting here today, uh, and uh, they, they, can, they can match uh, total in terms of whatever product they can produce. And one last thing, and I will sit down in terms of the alcoholic beverage control law. Total cannot say anything that would distinguish them from any other store sitting in here. Any store in the state of New York has the right to purchase an alcoholic beverage just as Total does. So for Total to say you have a unique experience <coughs> walking into the Total store, you will see things you won't see anyplace else, nonsense. It, it's a specious argument. It doesn't exist. The people standing behind me have every product that Total has and then some. And if by some chance there is some product that Total can bring in that does you know, introduce to the market, every one of those stores can go, go talk to the individual wholesaler that's carrying the product and get that as well as, uh, as Total can. There is not one reason, again, just, just to, I, I will conclude myself with this. The hook for the, for the Westbury store was the New York product. You just heard that all of these stores carry the New York product. They, they, uh, they advance the New York product. They want to help the New York product. And it's been going on for a long time. That this, this is not something that, that, that just started uh, yesterday. Uh, one of the gentlemen who, who represents one of the uh, trade associations started a, 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 an organization known, known as Last Store on Main Street. Uh, and that, that was very instrumental in, in ensuring that, that the stores of the state of New York w carried New York product, promoted New York product, and should be, um, a, 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 and uh, should, should, you know, uh, express the fact that we are very proud that, that New York is uh, a state that carries uh, uh, various uh, spirits and uh, and wines. I will sit down. Thank you. Council, yeah. no. um, can you elaborate on the $6 million decrease yes, in sales? I, if you, I, I, I hope you have my written presentation. Yes. Okay. Um, if you will look at... <coughs> Um, it's part of, well, it is Exhibit F. Um, I've given you the, um, the sales figures of the three of the, of the closest stores to the Westbury store. And if you look at, if you look at uh, Westbury Liquors, Inc., which is the store that's in the same shopping center. Hold on, because we don't have the letters. We have the exhibits, but they're not lettered, so it's going to take us oh, a minute I'm sorry. to find Can I, I, I would have made more copies. I, no, ours are copies. That's why we don't have the letters. Well, I, I didn't, I, I put... F. You got it? Uh, you have it? B or F? F. F is in Frank. Oh. Oh, I see what you're saying, Donald. Yeah, do you have it? Yes. So under, under um, uh, White Plains, I'm sorry, uh, under um, Westbury Liquors, Inc., the gross sales figures, there's, there's a chart. Do you see the chart? Yes. Okay. Uh, so that, that chart lists the actual declines per month. Of um, of the Westbury store, and if you look at Christmas alone, the the the, the month of December, <laughs> they had a total drop of almost nine hundred and seventy thousand uh, nine hundred seventeen thousand dollars just in one month alone. I don't think I have a chart under F. Well, I, this is uh, may I approach? Yes. Yes. This is this is the 
this is what I'm talking about. I hope you have this. Yeah, right here. Yeah, there it is. That's it. Okay. Did you see that? Those are, those are actual sales figures from that Westbury store. Oh, I see. You, you double-sided it. That's why. Trying to save trees. So I, your I, $6 million is the aggregate of that. That's correct. Okay. Anything else? No, thank you. Right, thank you. Uh, we have a representative from, I, we're just told that there's a representative from Senator Mayer's office here, so before we go forward, could you come up if you want to? My name is Rachel Estroff. Thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of Senator Shelley Mayer as her chief of staff. She is in Albany today. As a New York State Senator representing much of Westchester County and more than 50 small and medium-sized liquor and package stores, I'm strongly opposed to Total Wine and More's application for a package store license to operate a big box store in Hartsdale, New York. And I believe its approval is not justified under the SLA statute. Many of my constituents who own and operate the small and medium-sized stores have expressed grave concerns about the effects of a big box wine and spirits store on both their livelihoods and the communities in which they live. There are already almost 200 package stores in Westchester County, including one within 400 <coughs> feet of the planned location. The vast majority of these liquor and package stores are operated by families who live in the communities in which their businesses are located. The entrance of a big box wine and spirits store into the local market presents existential threats to these local businesses. Moreover, with so many local liquor stores in communities across my district and throughout Westchester already creating a vibrant competitive marketplace, it do does not appear there is any public convenience or advantage for approval of another store that will use its size, buying power, and practices to in effect push out existing smaller retailers. In fact, I fear that the public will be disadvantaged by the loss of small community-based stores that willingly support our school fundraisers, local not-for-profits, and exhibit the best in community partnership. I'd like to add a personal note. As someone who has seen Westchester recently regain its economic footing in communities from Portchester to Yonkers, I find it deeply troubling that our small local businesses, our local liquor stores, could be at risk from the entrance of a mega store which has a track record of eliminating its competition. I believe our communities do best when we protect our small businesses and honor their longstanding commitment to each of our communities. In view of these concerns, I respectfully request and believe there's good cause under the law for the state liquor authority to deny this application. Thank you for your consideration of this important matter. Thank you. Thank you. I can give you. M Mr. S yep. It's fine. It's fine. Good morning again. Jonathan Schloss for Hartsdale Wine Shop. As noted earlier, Ms. Jacopelli is the owner of Hartsdale Wine Shop, which is situated approximately 60 feet from where the proposed applicant wants to go. I don't want to be repetitive. But I do second everything that Mr. Mailer said in his, in his presentation. I'll try to focus on, on some unique aspects that I'd like to uh, highlight. Well, I mean, I think the main <clears throat> issue here is we're being, I, I don't know what's going on with our store, I guess, is the question I have. Because I'm getting information that you submitted, which is somewhat in contradiction to what the applicant submitted. So is she going to be there or not? As far as we're concerned, absolutely. The, we have received notice, two notices from the landlord, actually. One in November, I believe. Well, when's her lease end? The lease, according to the landlord, has expired. According to um, Hartsdale Wine Shop, we have valid defenses that extend the lease to 2022. There's no uh, uh, landlord-tenant action pending. Um, I anticipate the possibility of a landlord-tenant action commencing sometime in January. That's been... Uh, but we all know how long that takes. Well, we don't. We we don't know. But for all intents and purposes, Hartsdale Wine Shop is here to stay. It's been there for 12 years as part of the Hartsdale community, um, and yeah, in in the event that the landlord would be successful, which we doubt, uh, and given that 
we're not litigating the lease here, but um, they seek but removal. So, so the plan is to stay at this Absolutely. point and, and to fight any if they do try to throw you out. Absolutely. Any okay. representation to the contract. All right. Anything interested. else you want to add? Go ahead. Yes. I just want to focus on the fact that um, Total Wine has telegraphed where they're going. Um, it's it's in the papers that you've received, both from Mr. Mailer and from my, myself, that uh, um, their behavior in other states. Now, there is case law out there which says that the likelihood of future violations can serve as a basis for denial. Um, in other states, for instance, where they just as a course of doing business may flout um, minimum pricing laws and chalk it up to civil disobedience or the cost of doing business, you can't stomach that here in the executive branch. As an agency which sits in the executive branch, charged with enforcing the laws as they exist, I put it before you that, it's, that the decision has to be made. Um, but see, hasn't that decision already been made with his brother getting a license in Westbury and with all this history here already? I mean, presumably they're both part of the history in other states. Perhaps it wasn't up for consideration. I wasn't. No, it was. I, I, I mean, I think it was question. presented to us. Wasn't it, Council, at that time? I wasn't. Yes, oh, you weren't even here? Yes, yeah, right. it was. It was discussed. But go ahead. Sorry, right, bit. The fact is that they tell you that they're going to do this. And they can, they can petition the courts. They can lobby the legislature. And that's all fine and dandy. And it, but you can't unfairly compete. And to go into a place where they've done it before, it's not, it's, it's not a secret. They, they advertise the fact that they're out for the consumer, which, again, on its face, Sounds sounds great. Everyone here likes to please their consumers, but you can't unfairly compete with everybody else because everybody else here sitting in, in this room is competing under the laws as they exist. And I'd like that the the authority to con, to reconsider that that their that type of behavior in other states, which inevitably will happen here. Um, one other thing I'd, I'd like to mention, which is that. That approximately two and a half years ago, I stood before this board representing a different client uh, who sought to uh, bring a 22,000 square foot store to Rockland County. That's a county just over the Tappanzee Bridge from, from Westchester, approximately eight or nine miles from where um, this current location is. That application was denied. Now, Rockland County has no big stores near, nearby. Pre property is a little more spaced out. Here in Westchester, you have Many more stores, many, uh, some big, some small, many more thousand square feet of uh, both New York product and <clears throat> general product alone. <clears throat> but to grant an application in Westchester of virtually the same size would be inconsistent reasoning. Um, so it's respectfully submitted that the application should be denied. And how big is her store? 2,100 square feet. It's uh, uh, 20, Normal, 000, right. It's, uh, yeah. How, how long have you been there again, Mia? Twelve years. Twelve years. So I don't want to rehash this, but is there an agreement for a buyout, like for you guys to requ to give up your liquor store license? They presented one, and it was rejected. Okay. So there's no actual agreement. There's no if 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 that was represented, that is. It is represented. Well, then that's that's 100 percent false. There's no agreement. Is it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. Miller, does any of the other four closest want to talk that you're not representing? Uh, that I know of, no, but I, can I just say uh, two more things, and I'll be very brief. Number one, um, with respect to that $6 million, I did not indicate that's a 46% drop in the, their overall sales from yes. where it was a year ago. And um, it was just brought to my attention, there are a number of, of Long Island stores in the audience if you want to hear their tales of woe with respect to the decrease in sales, they, they, they would, I don't know if you want to hear it, but they can come up and explain that they've all suffered tremendous losses as a result of the Westbury store. I mean, you presented that to us in written form, so I don't need to hear it. I don't know if you do. No, I think no. we're okay. Do you need to hear it? No. no. Chairman, Thank you. Record, there's about another 10 licensees down in the lobby downstairs. How many? About 10. Yeah. Um, who apparently were all to the application. There's, there's no well, tell them that can they send, uh, uh, they don't need to come up, but can they do something? Do we, I assume we have letters from all of them as well? I've got their name. Okay, all right. Thank you. Anyone else that? All right. Ms. Russo, you're on.
Good afternoon. Thank you for your time today. As you know, we submitted a very comprehensive document outlining public convenience and advantage, but we'd like to highlight some of the exhibits and have Mr. Trone further explain some of our exhibits. Um, I'd like him to begin by introducing himself and telling the board a little bit about his experience in the industry. All right, let me get organized here. I apologize if I talk fast sometimes. When I'm nervous, I get a little carried away. So I, free, I know the feeling. Feel free to tell me to slow down. Um, I was here approximately 12 months ago, and I will repeat a few things for Commissioner Fan was not here. That I was born and raised on a farm in South Central Pennsylvania. After that, I went to the Wharton Business School and graduated from the Wharton Business School. Then came back from that, worked in the family farm, and eventually the farm went bankrupt. And at that time, my father purchased a small retail beer store in Pennsylvania, and that was my introduction to the alcoholic beverage business. Approximately eight years after that, I left the the, the we went, I went back to law school at the University of Pennsylvania, graduated from law school at the University of Pennsylvania, then sought an opportunity in the wine and spirits business. So my brother and myself purchased a small package store in northern Delaware and opened a small package store. I then moved from Philadelphia, if I was at law school, to Delaware and ran that store in Delaware. Eventually, we purchased a second store in Delaware, but we also expanded that, and I ran that store also. Gradually, over the few years after that, been very fortunate and we were able to expand our business and today I have an ownership interest in 186 stores across 21 states. As I thought about preparing for this hearing, I really thought about what makes my concept successful, why have I been successful in this business environment and I really think it's come to two reasons. One reason is a strict compliance with the laws of every state. We're involved in 21 different states, many different municipalities. Each one, as you know, had their own peculiar system of regulation. One of my goals as a lawyer is really to look at each state's law, talk to the regulator, and make sure that my business is operating within the law, clearly within the law, in every way possible. Minors is our number one thing at all times. <clears throat> Excuse me. That I have a policy of Three week, a week of training for every cashier to make sure they understand the importance of carding. We pay money for carding people under 30 years old. If they turn down a customer, they get another bonus. And we have an, I have an excellent track record in both compliance and compliance with minors. Over the 186 stores that I have an ownership interest in today, there's been 26 confirmed citations over a 27-year period. I would suggest that is the best record of any alcoholic beverage retailer that's in multiple states or multiple stores in the country with an average of one citation for per every seven licenses over a 26-year period. When you say citations, you're talking about underage citations? or no, all types of citations. Underage plus pricing or whatever that citation mm -hmm. may be. Um, so I think that that I'm very, very proud of. This, and I, certainly an intention is in New York, again, to work with the state authorities. New York has a few different twists that other states do not have, and I'm sure I will be perfectly able to adapt to those and run a license fully complying with your laws. The second area I wanted to touch a little bit, which deals on some of the things Mr. Mailer presented, was second focus of my business has always been the consumer. What I can, can do to make a business that attracts the consumer, satisfies their needs, helps them. Why do they come shopping at my store? They come here because they want to, whether it's the selection, whether it's the great staff training, whether it's the parking, the ease in and out, et cetera, et cetera. The tasting, we'll talk more about that later. But it's really a package of how do you as a consumer get excited about shopping at my store? As I was preparing for the hearing, it really struck me that my concept of con focusing on the consumer is really identical to the public, media, public convenience and advantage standard. And I'll read from your, your, your note in the Suffolk County decision, which is Exhibit P, that we will consider whether adding a store at a given location will provide some public convenience and advantage to the consumers in the area in the service of the public interest. Thank you. And to me, that statement of <coughs> how you folks defined public convenience and advantage in New York is really identical to what I've always tried to do for the consumer, is how do I help the consumer? Um, the, um, I think Mr. Mueller, Mr. sorry, Mr. Mailer, sorry. The, um, I thought his name was Mueller, okay. He um, really talked a little bit about 
in the presentation of in the letters about how competition is affected, how it's going to impact competition. I was raised in an environment that competition is good, that healthy competition produces better things for the consumers and the public in the United States. That was my background always. And when I hear someone say in protecting the competition, it makes me a little nervous. It feels a little bit odd in this country. I will reflect on back on your own decision again, where you wrote, we do not consider the impact of the addition of another store will have on the sales of current licensees, but we will only use those sales as an indication of demand in the area, which I you know, incredibly agree with, and I think that's the way America should be run. We've heard from a few politicians today, and certainly talking about their constituents and understanding the importance of representing their constituents well, and I certainly understand the reason for them speaking in the letters they wrote and perfectly respect that. I do think that I've seen in other markets, as our stores are in the markets, while there is some initial opposition from local package stores at times and some politicians acting on their constituents' behalf. Over time, my stores have always been a pillar in the community, supported the local community through donations, through employees working with them, and over time we become part of the community and are looked after it as legislators and politicians and really be part of that and look back later on, they say, hey, I'm sorry I opposed to you many years ago. You really are a good store. I'm sure the same thing will happen in New York. We'd like to return to Exhibit A, so the applicant can describe the This is your Exhibit A and your submission? Proposed location, Exhibit A in our submission, correct. So I think Mr. Mueller, Mr. Mailer, sorry, Mailer brought up the concept <laughs> of what is the trade area and does the trade area for my store in Hartsdale White Plains overlap with the trade area in the Westbury store? More specifically, does my brother's well, store? Well, I think I, don't, I, I think what he said to and Mr. Miller, correct me if I'm wrong. He doesn't know whether it does or it doesn't. But your brother, when he applied here, indicated a trade area that he was going to encompass, and without question, it encompasses the area where you're putting this store. Am I saying that correctly? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Let, 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 me, let me address each of those points. Um, I wasn't at the hearing that my brother testified to. I read the transcript a few months ago, but I don't remember the exact transcript. So I well, it was in your denial of in, in okay. the Stony Brook store. Okay, so I think if you look at the Westbury store, is located here. Nassau County is right here. Suffolk County is here. And the commission basically ruled in, in, the Suffolk, in the Stony Brook decision that the consumers in Westbury, excuse me, consumers in Suffolk County could be serviced by the Nassau County store. That was, I understand, the ruling. I'm not here to debate whether that was correct or incorrect. We said it was within, it was within I think, his self-stated sphere of influence. Okay. Yeah. Right. Which he said went to New Jersey. To I believe, well, I'm going to say, if I want to, if I can't go, my understanding when I read his testimony, what he was trying to say is there will be some customers that come to the store from New Jersey, but my understanding... Oh, yeah, he didn't indicate every customer right. from New Jersey was coming to his store. And now he's had over a year of experience, so we'll speak to where the customers are actually coming from and where okay. they're shopping based my, on credit card sales. Working with my, over the years, my brother in real estate, in our, my business model, there are a market area where most of your customers come, which are relatively close to the store, maybe 15, 25 minutes away, then an extended trade area, then a few lingering customers that come from quite a distance, unknown why they come. Okay, so what's the yellow area? Okay, so let me, if I could, so here's Stony Brook, here's West Bay, excuse me, here's Stony Brook, here's Westbury. My store at Hartsdale White Plains will be here. Okay, what I'd like to really emphasize is a few points. Is one is Suffolk County and Nassau are directly on Two, two major roads, east-west roads. It's very easy to go from Suffolk County to Westbury as you approach the city. There's a lot of back and forth. I would propose basically... The I people on Long Island would argue differently. <laughs> you could be correct about that. But I, I would argue that there's very... The tr going from White Plains to Westbury is... Mr. Mueller said it's 22 miles, which he's correct if you have a helicopter and you can fly. But most of us will drive down through Bronx, across the bridge, through Queens County, and over to Westbury, which is a rather difficult drive. 36 miles, 55 minutes, and an hour and a half, based on my experience. I think another point of it is, if you look at what have other, other retailers done in the market, the New York market. In New York, basically, there's three major shopping areas of over 2.5 million feet. 
one in White Plains, one in West Ferry, one in Bergen County, and then New York itself. So I think other retailers, other developers have really looked at the market and said, hey, if I have four big stores, where are they going to go? West Ferry, White Plains, Paramus, and downtown New York. That's really how the city is laid out from a retail perspective. That's one point. Um, I think the last point really is what has happened. And I think the point we brought up before, the hearing was before David Davis' store was open, and there was a question of what would the draw be? He might have had his own theory. Commission could have a theory, but at the end of the day, no one knew. But today, we actually have facts. Based on the facts, if you look at where David's customers are coming from today, out of the three-state three, three state area, 85% of his customers come from the pink area. That's the reason for the pink. So 85% come from somewhere in Long Island, and only 2.2% come from the yellow area. So to me, that's convincing evidence that this store is serving quite a bit of Long Island, but is not serving these four counties. 85% of his business comes from Long Island, 2.2% comes from here. The number of people in both areas are a little bit less here, but somewhat considerable to Long Island. And how are you getting these numbers? Is this off of just credit card receipts or? Yeah, credit card receipts. I don't know where to track the cash sales, but they're done by zip code and credit card Where's receipts. Where's the other 13% coming from? The other 13% would come from other counties, Bergen County, New Jersey, um, Richmond County, other counties in Connecticut, so there's a little bit of fluff in the data, so I'm saying. All right. How would you do the analysis for your two closest stores, one in Norwalk and one in New Jersey? Because Norwalk is on 95. It's a 27-mile drive. On a good day, that's about 20 minutes. So I would, I think that's an excellent point, and I have another slide coming up on that that shows the number of customers that are shopping here in the Norwalk store and in the Graham store. So if, if, we, if we could hold your question until we get to that slide, it might be easier. Sure. Because I think the, the key is, for, for my purposes, <coughs> it's really about Westchester County consumers. How do, we, how do I service the Westchester County consumers? And I would proposition that somebody in Westchester has to drive to Paramus or Norwalk, Kentucky, Connecticut for their product. That's, that's not serving them public convenience needs, public convenience advantage. Move on to Exhibit B. Well, I mean, that state's not a border. You know, they go back and forth all the time. I, would, I, would certainly they to I, I don't, but I know that. My husband I don't is from Connecticut, so I kind of took offense to that. <laughs> right, I think I, I'm just suggesting that the southern part of Connecticut is really, I believe, part of my trade area, that I will get a lot of customers from the southern part of Connecticut. But I think for a typical person who lives in Westchester County driving the whole way to Norwalk, Connecticut is a little bit of an inconvenience when they already have all the professional services, their job in White Plains. Maybe they'll get to Stanford, but going the whole way to Norwalk is a bit of a haul. So to say. Yep. Yeah, I would um, agree. Transition to exhibit. I think one, which, one, got a one, second. Uh, one thing, even in Mr. Mailer's presentation, he did mention that he went out a little bit further this time and really talked about a 20-minute, 20 20-mile 20 drive ring around the store. So I think he even conceded the point that, you know what, the store is growing. The 20-minute is kind of the bullseye of trade area. Okay. Okay. So now let's talk a little bit about the, the trade area itself. Can you put the other slide back for one second? We were here about a year ago. It, would it be possible for you to stay oh, at the mic? Sorry, thank you very much. Excellent. We can make sure to get everything recorded. Oui. All right. When we were here a year ago, Mr. Mueller brought up how desol desolate Suffolk County was. The population was going backwards. And in his presentation, he actually submitted an Exhibit 6, which really talked about the growing demographics of the Hartsdale area. I reviewed his growing demographics and agreed with him that Hartsdale is a growing is a good area for a store, and therefore, I've now applied in Hartsdale, which I think is a superior location for myself than Suffolk County. We will look at the now we're ready. You can see, excuse me, on Exhibit B, is a you can see the center itself, which is outlined in red, um, with the store itself. I mean, 21,000 feet directly in front of it. 
there's over 100 cars of parking on two overflow sides towards the Christmas tree shop at the top, H mark in the bottom, and again, overflow. There's three separate single lights that allow easy access in and out of the center. 287 comes, it comes across the top, very close. White Plains itself is about one and a half miles directly towards Mr. Mailer. So you can see a very centralized, a very easy get in and out of, very commercial, easy for customers to shop. In addition, the store itself will help the economy by filling a vacant spot. For whatever reason, there's been two grocery stores, not the best grocery stores in the world, that have not succeeded at that. And the landlord is certainly looking forward to fill it with a vibrant tenant who can attract people to the White Plains area and to his shopping center. I think in your binder, which I do not have an exhibit on the board for, is some more development in the area, looking at some retail development, some... Exhibit B, pages three and four. Some retail, some housing, and some job development in the area. But I think the real key for us is it's not really about this area. It's about the wider trade area that we're discussing. And in the center itself, we're certainly being an anchor within the center. Where's, uh, where's Hartsdale Wine Shop on that? Hartsdale Wine Shop would be right here, so right here in this corner. Okay. Move to exhibit C, the applicant will describe. So I have one question about that. So can you just explain why in your materials you talk about the fact that if this were granted, Hartsdale would turn in their, their license? I think whether what, what we said at our presentation, that it it wasn't Hartsdale that would turn in their license. But was a separate license has agreed to that's turn a mile in their away. license. That's a mile away. Well, the serial number you have is the serial number we have for them. So the name is slightly different, but that's the information we have. That wasn't cheap. What is Hardstale Village? Is that another store? That's, a different, that's store. a different store. Is that the one that's, that's turned? That's the store that has agreed to turn in their license. And we also have the landlord who you'll hear from. But the from serial the number you've listed is their serial number. So is that just a. That, that would be a mistake. Yeah, that then. would. Uh, both stores being called Hardstale. Wine was a bit confusing. So who is Harsdale Village Wine and Liquor? Is that person here? I do not think they're here. No. That's a, the, the corporate name is GP Wines. Is what? GP Wines. GP Wines. Hi, this is Jackie in Albany. How far away is that store? It's about a mile away. About a mile away? I thought about a mile and a quarter, could, mm -hmm. give or take. But how come they're not listed on the closest wine store list if they're one mile away? Maybe a little further. Right. Jackie? I would have to get. I would have to have a computer to look that up. Okay. But um, we can look into it. Okay. Is the driving yeah. distance or is the crow flies, Teresa? I have. I have the exact. Let me get the. Okay. They were certainly listed as part of our application. Yeah. Here it is. I have the proximity report. It's one point one nine miles. So it still should be within the five yeah, it should be. No, it's not. not nice we have Hartsdale, Westchester Wine, 128 West Post Road, Emirate Beverage, CNS Wine and Liquors. CNS, though, we have it when granted our distances are off sometimes, but it, that we have them at 2.3 miles. No, I mean, no. this is the proximity report that we. Yeah, all right, well, J Jackie, you're going to look into this? Sorry. Yeah, I'll look into it. All right, just let us know when you find out. Mary's just on it. Three. Okay, go ahead. Okay, sorry about that. The. Um, <clears throat> So let's go back to the demographics. If we could put those up there now. <clears throat> As Mr. Mailer spoke earlier, that usually the commission looks at the very closest stores to determine public convenience and advantage. In our particular area, the trade area for my store would be much wider, with the primary trade area being almost all of Westchester County in the extended area, including Plainfield, New Connecticut, Rockland County, and the Bronx. So that would be the extended trade area, but the more closer in trade area, West Westchester. The purpose, both of these, all four of these communities, counties are growing in population, not that fast, but growing, certainly growing in very well in um, income predicted over the next five years to grow almost 14% per house capital, for household income in each of these areas. So you can see the, the um, number of people who live in the four county areas, 3.8 million, and almost a million people living with Westchester. And that would be 
what I would say is my primary trade area, Westchester, an extended trade area would be the complete four county areas, give or take a few miles. Okay, Exhibit H, pages one and two. Although we don't believe the sales of the closest stores are relevant, since this is a destination store drawing consumers from multiple well, counties. So how can you say they're not relevant given what some of those stores have indicated that their sales drops? Well, it's going to be, I mean, we're taking one, the one The person that's closest miles. to your store indicated that their sales have dropped 46 percent. You're telling me that's not relevant? I mean, that's David. I mean, it indicates, it indicates to me that when we granted that license, the demand was one thing, and they haven't brought, they, they made a representation to us that it wasn't going to affect the, the stores. And my experience here is when we see a store drop that significantly, they either close, okay, or they start breaking the law, which is my concern. Maybe I, I could address that. That particular store is a, what I call a Costco. Well, no, this is, we have records in here that indicate that there's a consistent drop in sales, and that's part of the deal when you open a new store up, but the sales drop has been significant in the majority of the, the stores in the surrounding area. So I, to me, my brother's store is doing a huge volume, drawing from throughout Nassau County into Suffolk County, as we had testimony from some of Mr. Mueller's client, Mr. Mailer's clients. There's certainly everyone agrees there's a very wide trade area. It would only make sense that there, some of the local stores will be impacted a little more. They're impacted mainly, in my opinion, because David's store is serving the public convenience and advantage to the customers in his area better than the other stores. The particular. Okay. All right. Ma no. Oh, oh. Excuse me. I'm going to empty the room because I right now I don't need any of you. I have the people in here that I need. So if you're going to sit here and start making comments every time he opens his mouth, I'm going to clear it. Go ahead. So my, my suggestion is I have visited the store that Mr. Mueller suggested. It sits next to a Costco. It's approximately 4,000 feet. It has a very minimum selection. I believe the customers that came out of that store and went to my brother's store went there for the selection that he offered, the service he offered in a clean shopping environment. Purely, what, in my mind, what public convenience means. I agree it's unfortunate, but to me, that, that's the reason. Okay. So, so while we're on that topic, can I just ask you a few questions? Um, how many employees are there in the West Bear store? Um, I think I asked the other day, and they had 124, 25. And what are the sales numbers, let's say, in uh, 17? What do you know? I don't know the exact number. My belief, the number would be um, somewhat north of $60 million. $60 million? 60. 60. 60. Six zero. in the last 12 months. In one year, just one year? That's my understanding. I could be off by a few dollars. And what percentage of the products are New York products in that store? I believe that approximately, if I do my math correctly in my head, of the wine products, there's around 10, nine or nine percent, ten percent wine products are New York products. And in your documents, you talk about local philanthropy. So, <coughs> can you give me some examples of what you've done for the community in the West Bay area? Okay, certainly Just in the West Bay area, I can't give you any examples there. That's my brother's store. I can give you examples what what I've done in my stores in other parts of the country. Okay. Certainly, I think that we have a, I have a policy of giving back to the community. We have local managers, so when anyone comes and asks for, in, in the states that it's legal, a case of wine, a, a case of beer, whatever we can do to give back to the community, over, you add it up over the year, those stores that I have ownership interest, it adds to around $5 million a year in, in product giving back to the consumer in cash, so a considerable amount of philanthropy. We also use the classroom. That's $5 million over the 186 stores? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You have an ownership that interest I have an ownership in. interest. Okay. The then in addition, we have a classroom in the stores at most stores that we allow the local community to use for different events. If someone wants to get together and have a, a space in the store, because sometimes it's, groups have a hard time finding a meeting room, so we use that as a meeting room. And we certainly try to also fund local local charities, sending people out to help them with wine tasting, sending people to the charity events that we donate wine to to talk about the wine in a little bit, and anything we can do. And I like to say it's partly a philanthropic concept, but it's also partly good business to really work with the local community. And our goal really is to be the local wine shop in all the communities that we work in, because we really believe if I can do that, 
then I'm successful. If I can't be the local shop, and I'm, if my store is the big box store, then I'm a failure. I need to be the local shop, and that's the only way that I'm ever going to succeed, and that's how really I grew up. Yeah. Working in the store, I realized the importance of being the local part of the community. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's the key, and, and with the store in Hartsdale, it's really going to be the same. How I can be the local part of that community, really working with that community on an everyday basis. Do you plan on moving there? I do not plan on moving there at this time. My daughter's in 11th grade, and I promised her I'd stay home to she graduates. But you plan on spending But I'll spend considerable, considerable time there. It'll be my primary focus. And at some point in time, my wife has does bug me to move to New York. I'm not on board in that yet, but she really likes hmm. northern Manhattan. The employees, I, I assume, how many, how many employees? You said like 60, I think. I believe the, the application was an error. It was amended. It was originally 60. We've amended it to 100 employees. OK. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, Chairman. Yep. Members, to answer your question, um, I was looking for the examiner's notes. That was an oversight. It is listed as driving as 1.5 miles. Um, and counselor did indicate that as one of the four closest. Um, I just don't have his notes scanned in to see Generally, they come from GIS, and then they do their own measurements, and that's how they report them and come up with the four closest. So those are not available. But we um, may, Mr. Miller, did you turn those in? That's what I'm not sure. I okay. Know. All right, okay. thanks. See I'm sorry, can I just clarify uh, again? So Hartsdale Village? The, the, the GP Wines um, yes. is 1.5 miles away, driving distance. That's their document. Yeah. I did that's see it. To follow up on counselor's um, amendments, they did file paperwork to indicate from 60 employees to 100. You indicated a change on the floor plan, but I'm, with no explanation, I'm not sure what exactly you added or removed. Okay, we'll explain the floor plan if one of our slides, and we'll let you know what the revisions were. Thank right. you. Here you mentioned it, this, this document. Yeah. So GP Wines, if it's, if it's within the trade area, if okay. so the GP closest wines, stores, okay. that's the one that we have the agreement right. with. To purchase. And do you have any idea what their sales are approximately or no? Um, there was nothing in the file, Chairman. No, no, not you. I'm talking to okay, Ms. Russo. Right. I believe I, that there's something less than a million dollars a year, not a substantial store. Okay. Can I ask a question of Westchester Wine Warehouse? Yes. You want, you want, you want. yes. Um, so, so um, I see some decrease in your numbers. I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you have any, do you, in your mind, what's the explanation? Well, we've, over the years, we've seen an increased amount of competition. That's just not retail competition. Everybody here in this room is one of my competitors, and we're all each other's competitors. But we see that there's additional competition coming from um, internet retailers, which are right across the street in New Jersey, New York, mm -hmm. in New York itself, but upstate, upstate, as you know, has lower pricing files, so they can all definitely offer a lower price than us downstate retailers, New Jersey, Connecticut, and then you have retailers all around the country who are, who are all competing for the same dollar. The other thing is that um, since New York State has allowed wine to be sold directly from wineries, we've seen a decrease. I have a lot of customers saying, well, I can get that from the wine club. I have friends, personal friends, who say, well, I can get that from my wine club and yeah. at a better price. So uh, additionally, we have wine clubs pr proliferating, the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, everybody. Right. And everybody who's got the penny saver is probably going to have a wine club by next year. <laughs> right. So we have everybody going into the same market. So it's not just Mr. Tone's store that's going to impact us. It's, uh, it's the increased amount of competition overall that's affecting this market. And we've seen that decrease. We've been flat. We've been declining. That tells us, hey, we have to do a better job, sure. We have to do more advertising, sure. Spend more money, absolutely. Um, but we can't ignore the effects of those outside kind of competition. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Exhibit H, for the gross sales in the area. <laughs> So as Teresa indicated, we don't feel the gross sales of particular local stores are that relevant. But out of courtesy of the commission, we wanted to make sure we presented them. Well, here's why they're relevant, and I don't like hearing that, because they're relevant to us because it indicates what the demand is. And if the sales are going down before anyone even gets there, that tells me that there's less demand. Okay, I, I, I agree with your logic. I'm only suggesting... Well, that's one of the factors. I realize you have your own... 
a definition of public convenience and advantage, but that's one of the factors of public convenience and advantage, is whether there is an increased demand for alcohol. You're looking to put, you're looking to double the square footage of alcohol stores within a uh, two or three mile radius, and the demand for alcohol is reflected in the sales that are occurring before you get there. But so that to me, that's why they're relevant, but go ahead. So the sales of the four small stores, we put them in two different groups. We do the wine warehouse second and the small stores. As you can see, for the first year, three years, there's been small growth in the sales between 2014 and 2017, a limited amount of growth. For 2018, we did a little projection. I'm not saying it's a perfect way to do a projection. The second half of the year is a bigger half year in the alcoholic desert beverage business with the holidays, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and New Year's. What I did is I took the, the sales that Westchester Wine Warehouse had on their first half of the year versus their second half of the year and assumed that the other markets, the other stores would have the same percentage of a difference. The same percentage. Wait, say that again, what you did? You took the, the Westchester Wine Warehouse presented us with both the first half and the second half. So what we did, I did, is took the sales, the percentage sales they had the second half of the year versus the total year and took that percentage and divided it into the first half of this year for these four stores. Basically to help weight that the second half but of the he, year. But what, what Westchester Wine Warehouse does 17 million a year. The rest of these stores do barely a million. No, but it's just a percentage. But you, I don't know that that's even, the two stores are two completely different animals. I, I, I 100% agree with you. I mean, there's a store, a store that's 400 square feet is not doing in the second half of the year percentage-wise the same percentage that Westchester Wine Warehouse is doing. Sir, I'm not, I'm, I do not disagree. Well, what's the ever. percentage you came up with then? I believe the percentage, like off top of, I think it was around 55% or 60%, but that's the math that I used. So they did 60% of their sales for the year or in the second half of the year? Right. Okay. Whether that makes sense or not, that's just, I had to have some math. Okay, let's go to wine show. Next slide. So back to that. So you have every one of these five closest stores going up, or I should say four closest stores going up between last year and this year. Right. And it could be for the very reason you, you suggested, that perhaps that those stores are more local oriented. They don't have the increase that a store like Westchester Wine Warehouse might at the end of the year. So I can't disagree with you on, on that, that math. But okay, go ahead. The only thing I had to use. The... Um, I think the key point really for the Westchester Wine Warehouse, which was originally, a, a, in 2004, they had sales of $6.9 million. In 2017, they have sales of $16.4 million. So over the period of 13 years, they've had a tremendous growth in sales, growing from two, a little bit less than $7 million up to $16.5 million. As a gentleman spoke a few seconds ago, they did have one down year, the reason for that I do not know. He didn't seem to have any good explanations either. There's a lot of reasons for why sales can shift. I do know that what he reported on his sales numbers for the first half of this year, first the first half of last year, was a marginal increase, and at least shows that his sales have flattened out and not going down anymore, but are half. And you can see on the chart, it shows the, here the actual sales reported from the January to June 2017 versus the actual sales from January to July 1st, 2018. So those sales indicate that his sales are slightly up this year, the first six months, not that much, but certainly no longer going down. We also wanted to add to the record the Westchester Wide Warehouse sales from two, the sales data from 2003 to 2006, if we can just Add that to the record. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's also our understanding, I know there was some discussion before about the Hartsdale Wine and Spirits shop that's in the same plaza and whether they were going to continue to operate in that space. And we have the landlord here who would like to speak to that point. Sure. Okay. I 
Good afternoon. I'm David Vendor. I'm the Executive Vice President of Bricksmore Property Group. Uh, we own the shopping center uh, where Hartsdale Wine is currently located and uh, where we propose to bring Total Wine into, this, into the center. Um, the uh, Hartsdale Wine Shop had a 10-year lease which expired on 6-30-17, June 30th, 2017. Tenant did have the right to renew that lease for an additional five-year period. It was a tenant only right that required notice by January 1st of 17. Uh, notice was, I can assure you that notice was not received and there has been no attempt to exercise that option since January 1, 2017. Um, on, uh, Attorney Schloss has been in contact with us and has just asked that we allow his client to stay through the holidays. I will, I will add that, which we have agreed to do pending the, the well, result what, of this What's issue. your recourse if they decide to, you have to evict them? Yes. So How long does that take? They're in a month-to-month -month tenancy right now, and it would probably take a number of months to proceed with an eviction proceeding, which they've been notified that is our So the reality is, is that these guys came in and said, we like your plaza, and you said, see you to the store that was already there. No, they actually, we didn't engage uh, with Total Wine until months after the time that they elected to uh, 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 forego the renewal option and not contact us about a renewal. Okay. Um, the the uh, can, uh, discussions we entered in, the initial discussions were April of 17 with Total Wine. Um, and, uh, you know, we're which a public is, company. Which, which is four months past so. there. That's correct, three, no, three four months. Mm -hmm. uh, and those were discussions. The lease was signed. Um, lease was not signed uh, for some number of months. Uh, the ten, let's see here, ten, right? I believe the lease was signed in July of, uh, of that year. Uh, we're a public company, publicly traded uh, real estate investment trust, and uh, we're very focused on doing right, what's right for the communities we serve. We believe this will be a wonderful addition to the market, will serve the customer well, um, and uh, we, we believe they're a best-in-class retailer that will uh, – I just wanted to leave it at that, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. I don't have any. Do you guys have any? No, I'm good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can we break for two minutes? Sure.
Uh, we are back on the record. May I just say one thing? You asked me before. I didn't realize I do have the GP numbers. Um, at the time, they, they were one of uh, the stores. And their, their gross sales for 2016 were $469,000. 2017, $436,000, and for um, reporting through 831 of this year, it was $215,000. They they had a ceiling collapse, and they were closed for part of the time. But their numbers for the years before, that was, they're, they're a, a store that's sub -market. So they're not operating right now? They are operating. They are operating. But they're, they, these are, they just managed to reopen because of the, um, of the um, collapse in their ceiling. Uh, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay. Um, Council, can I ask you another question? Yeah. Yes. Do you have any information about um, potentially stores that closed in Westbury as a result of the others? The problem with Westbury, once you've done, or once the authority's done its thing, it's very difficult to get the stores to even talk about it. What I've heard, stores are on the verge of, of giving up. Um, they, they, they've lost tremendous amounts and they're on the verge of giving up. Um, one further thing with the, with the store that I was just talking about in Hartsdale. First of all, if we're talking about buying another store, there's something known as a neighborhood removal, which you're all familiar with, and certainly a store. Right, you, you can do that oh, later. Let them, right. they, you had your piece. Well, I'll let you come again if you have other issues. I would like to address just one second, Mr. Mueller. Who indicated that stores are going out of business? And certainly, my understanding. No, that was the question. He's, oh. He he indicated that he didn't know, but that he's hearing people may pack it in. Okay, but to the best of my knowledge, no store has gone out of business near in Nassau County in the last 12 months. Okay. In other states, what we really found that is, as I open stores in other states, some stores have to shift, become a little more convenience focused, change the way they operate, better serve the consumer. But I cannot. There's really been no to almost zero stores that have gone out of business in our particular neighborhood of stores that are opened because they are st my customer is somewhat a different customer looking to buy high volume. You're saying in the entire country no store has gone out of business when you opened a Total Wine? No, I, I didn't say that. Oh, I said oh, I thought that's what I heard. Uh, okay, I said the impact has been much less than I originally thought 30 years ago when I got into business that we have all this volume. It's a big store, a lot of customers, but then the store across the street is still there. And I own a store in Laurel, Maryland. The store protested it 25 years ago, my license, and I drove past there last week and it's still in business. Okay. But, um, okay, so th the question is, really answering the question is why is my store unique? And I want- Exhibit F. Which exhibit F. F. Um, Jackie brought up that it did have a little bit of change in the floor plan. The ingress and accurate, the, the size of the store is identical. The indoors and outdoors is identical. Basically, what I've decided over the last few months is that I would like to flip the store and put the wine on one side and the spirits on the other side. So some of the shelving got shifted left or right, but the layout of the store is basically identical. So I think the real key is that my store is a unique store, a store that is really unlike any other store in the area, in the four-county area, completely unique. We didn't hear anything different from Mr. Mailer today, anybody representing that their store is somewhat like mine. You know, what I'd like to go through and... I'm afraid to say might be a little bit too much detail for you, is really what is the, how unique the store is, because I really think that's the key. My store is a unique store. It's in a unique trade area, not in my brother's trade area, a unique store in a trade area that will draw a considerable amount of customers. <coughs> it will really provide considerable public convenience and advantage for the consumers in the area. The, um, okay, so the... What we could is, we talked before a little bit about where the location of the store is near some other national retailers. You can see the layout of the store. And I like to stick, stay by the mic so I don't lose. Sure. You can see, as you come in the front door there, the register's on the left. The wine area will be straight ahead. There's a large tasting station in the front of the store to taste wines. My goal is to taste wine seven days a week. Many times, two different products, one in the wine area, another in the spirits area. The spirits will be in the far left. You can see the two areas for the New York focus where New York, New York wines are, if you can point to that, please. New York wines, then the far side, New York spirits. Spirits will be on the left, wine will be on the right. So I'm putting the New York products in a prominent location within their particular category, we'll focus on tasting those wines, as we said before. The classroom, I did label New York classroom, but that will be used for New York and other classes, but certainly provide an opportunity, which I really think is great, 
for winemakers, winery owners, distilleries, distillery owners to really come down, do an educational event, do a tasting. It's very convenient for them given the location of White Plains. And I certainly, I found that in other states that when you have the local winemaker, st states that they sell beer, the local brewer, it really allows that interaction with the customer and they really appreciate that. And it brings a lot to the store, but really helps that business, that winery, that distillery promote their products in a way that they can't do elsewhere being inside a store talking to actual customers about their products. How many of um, your square feet in the store is dedicated to New York spirits, give or take? Uh, maybe it'd be, I would be guessing if I had to try a square foot. If we get the selection chart, I can show you the percentage of items that are New York items versus other items. That uh, might be, all right, that I might be an easier chart because it'd be. I can wait till then. I'd Go be ahead. guessing otherwise. I don't want to guess. The. Um, Okay, so I think if we also look at the store, what's different about it, we talked about the classroom, we have classrooms, we talked about the tastings, we do tasting seven, I'll do tasting seven days a week. On busy days, we'll have four tastings. These tasting stables are designed to spread out so the, so the customers can taste two different areas within each tasting stand. To me, staff education is one of the big differences in my store. We're going to talk about selection in the next slide, but as I look at consumers, what do they like about my store? They like the selection the easy to purchase, the, the wine staff itself. And what do I mean by the wine staff? These are the individuals that are talking to the consumers on the sales floor about their purchases, explaining about the product, talking about what they're going to use the product for, the events, interacting with the customer. And as I look at my customer compliments that come back, they're really talking about selection and great service. Those are the things that they really focus on are fundamental to the business itself. The store, again, will be very bright, wide aisles, much like a supermarket. So an easy, pleasant shopping experience. Parking in front of the center will be about 100 car parking directly in front. So very, again, very easy in and very out. The tenants on the left and the right don't overlap really parking-wise with my store. So again, a very easy in and out as far as the center goes itself. And certainly, um, we turn, turn to exhibit L. Okay. And we'll talk about the different product offerings. There have been a number of questions regarding the product offerings and what's available in the current area versus what will be provided by the applicant. Yeah, yeah, that copy. I can look in the sheet paper. Yeah. So, if you don't mind, I'll just find my page here so I can speak better for you. Perfect. So on the first column itself, which is labeled White Plains Fine Wines, shows the selection that I plan to carry within the store in total. So it has wine items of 9,200 in total, spirit items of 4,800 in total, New York wine wines of 990, New York spirits of 380, and New York ciders of 50. As you can see, that's a fantastic selection, much better than I believe any store in the trade area by far. Certainly the numbers that we heard today bear that out as, as it concerns the New York products. But if we could, let's focus for a second on the difference between White Plains Fine Wine, my store, and Westchester Wine Warehouse. You can see, based on, based on their, 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 their numbers, which I counted in the store, but I actually use the numbers come from their website. I think their website's probably more accurate than my counting. But their website lists that they have available for in-store purchase 2,859 products. Certainly they would argue, or Mr. Mueller would argue, that someone could come in and order any other product in the state. He's absolutely correct. You're allowed to order any other product. I've really found over the years in the business that consumers like to have a product when they come to the store. They want to be able to come in the store, pick up the bottle of the wine, read the back label, look at the vintage, see the price on the shelf, and put it in their cart. And it's a great inconvenience to have to special order the product. Certainly in my stores, we have considerable number of special orders, but they're inconvenient for the customer. They never run as smoothly as you hope. Wholesalers sometimes are out of the product. It's more of a, a friction in the purchasing. So I think the real key to my success is that fantastic selection available to purchase when you come into the store the day you'd like to purchase the product. And that has just been a, a fantastic help. So you can see, compared to Westchester Wine Warehouse, which is the biggest store in the market, my selection will be over 3.2 3 times. His selection is according to wine. On the spirit side, he lists 1,252 items of spirits carried, and, and I will have 4,800, so almost four times the number of spirits. On the, the wine side, I went to his website, and I counted 123 New York wines. 
I'll be carrying 990. So 123 to 990, I believe if my math is working well, is around eight and a half times. On New York Spirits, his website lists 107 items. My, my count will be 380 items. I think if we look at what he testified to, he testified to 171 in total. So I actually gave him, and maybe I overcounted a few, but I counted he has 230. He said he has 171, so I think we're in the ballpark. So I think one of the reasons why you are a really good candidate is because of your experience. And in some ways, because it's a family business, it's some version of mom and pop is just a really successful one. However, if you look on the Total Wine website, which does not include your existing New York store, currently you have a platform of 186 stores where you could be selling your wine products. But I can see that, sorry, Chairman, stealing his thunder here. I see 213 wines out of the 23,445 that are available on your website, which is 0.009%. So I find it hard to believe that for this store, you plan to bring in 9,000 wine items, and you know, you're cleaning more than 10,000 New York products, when really you have stores, 186 stores, where you could be promoting New York products, but you're not. I think that's a great question. Let me address it in, in two different parts. As I discussed earlier, the focus of my business has always been, how can, we be, how can I be hyper-local? For example, in the Virginia market, my stores in Virginia carry an extensive selection of Virginia wines. I'm not suggesting there's a demand for Virginia wines in New York. Much like in New York, in Virginia, there's not a huge demand for Virginia wines. And, and not only that, so one is the demand side, the consumer side. Consumers in New York, I think, are more closely interacted. No different, I have stores in Washington State. I carry an extensive selection of Washington State wines within Washington State. In California, the Washington State wines just don't sell at all, and they go bad on the shelf. So I think the real focus to me is how can I fine tune my selection to fit the needs of the consumer in each area. So that, I think, is really the one driver. The second driver is there's just not much distribution outside of New York and New York wines, other than a few major brands. New York wines, you have to buy them from a local wholesaler, obviously, in that state. And New most New York winers have chosen only to distribute their wines in the New York market through a wholesaler or direct themselves. And that, uh, yes. So these numbers, as far as, as far as why did I pick 990? I reviewed my brother how many items they actually have in their store, and that's the number they're actually in the store. So I felt that I could replicate that. I hope to do more than that, but those are actual ones. There's some discussion during the hearing a few months ago on how many wines are available in New York. I am positive there's 990 wines available for purchase. I'm positive there's 380 spirits, and positive there's 50 spirits, 50 on ciders. So those are hard numbers. I'd like to do more, and as time goes on, I think I will end up with more than that. But I think I wanted to give you a number that I was 100% confident that I could achieve. Did I answer your question? Mm -hmm. All right. I think the, um, as we look at the, go across the selection chart, you can see that the selection differences between the four stores on the left, or no, excuse me, four stores on the right is much more dramatic with if you look at perhaps an average of wine items in the sm four smaller stores of around 700, with my store being about four times as large, 14 times as many items, the spirit items around 500, with my store being almost 10 times as many, and the New York wines, I'd have to, you know, maybe my count was a little different than what they had, but those are the ones when I came to the store, what I could find, I asked the cashier to help me find the New York wines, those are the numbers I came up with, but were relatively similar to the numbers you heard testified today. Today, the largest number I heard from the market area in Westchester area was 170 New York products in total. My store will offer approximately 1,420 New York items in total compared to the largest number we heard today from the, the protestants in the room of 235. Um, so I think that's, that's the really the huge difference on the New York wine side. I would like to address the concept of the availability in one spot to purchase products. And I think Mr. Mailer correctly says his stores can buy the same product I can buy in New York. The products are available to everyone. So there's no product that I can carry in New York that's not available to another retailer. 
So 100% agree with that. New York's a very transparent state. If a wholesaler has it, they have to sell it to a retailer. So I am not claiming that I'm going to have any product in my store that's not available to any other retailer in the state. But I think the key is, from a consumer standpoint, having that product in the store available for the consumer to purchase is a big difference. As I look at it many, many years ago, and maybe some people still like it, there was a local butcher shop. You went to the butcher shop. You went to the vegetable shop for your vegetables. You went to the dairy store for your milk. You went to the your juice store for your juice. And each store was, was segregated. Eventually, for consumer convenience, consumer advantage, the stores have put the product in one spot. And I really think that's what I offer my consumer. So if a consumer wants to come in and buy 10 different types of wine, they can come to my store, more than likely find it. Yes, they could maybe find some at Westbury, they could find some at Zaki's, they could find a different one at CNS, but it'd be a very difficult experience in shopping, and I believe that to really serve public convenience and advantage to the consumer in this area, you need the product available to purchase when a customer would like to purchase. So I think that's really a key point that maybe I belabored a little bit, I apologize for that, but um, you know, I think it's really key is what has been made my business successful over the years. Thank you. Let's turn to Exhibit O, okay. unique attributes of the store. So Exhibit O, um, I said I was a little bit excessive, so it kind of repeats many of the points that we already covered. I'll just try to hit the ones that I think I might have missed. We talked about the store's side. We talked about the selection. talked about the number of employees. talked about the tastings. We, did, um, we talked about the parking in front of the stores. And we certainly talked about the um, extensive New York selection dedicated and I think the dedicated training is one thing we haven't touched. It's really important as I enter a local market, how do I train my people on those local wines? Because that's really the key to getting them off the ground. Just putting them on the shelf is eat. doesn't really do it. You need to get people excited, visit the wineries. I think someone else mentioned that today, the importance of visiting the wineries. And I fully support that concept. I think it's a great idea. And we'll do that very good. OK. You know, I, I do think that. Um, one thing on the parking, I think the importance of that, I happened to visit my brother's store about four months ago, and his parking's not very good, so there's a little bit of competition in the family on the parking side. <laughs> okay, so let's go to our next slide. So that's kind of what makes my story unique, and I think I'm very passionate about that, but I think the, the real key is, these are just my ideas. I think what the real key is, what does the consumer actually do? Does the consumer feel my store is unique enough that I serve their convenience and advantage. If I can do that for the consumer, then the consumer will shop with me. If my store is just unique and the consumers don't care, then it's just a unique store. So we can put up the next slide. Let's Sorry. turn to Exhibit J, which talks about the demand of the products that are not currently being met in the area. Okay. Before we go, take one down one second. You want to go? No, no, just take one down one second. We changed the order a little bit. Sorry. So we're, we're on J? Um, I just want to... Let me just make sure I got my notes correct. <laughs> okay, so I think the, the real question is, why do I believe uniqueness will work in New York? And I have a couple different reasons for it. One is my own past experience having unique stores in markets similar to New York, whether it be my store in Laurel, Maryland, whether it be my store in Paramus. Again, metropolitan areas competing against independent package stores. How does my store survive? How does my store prosper? It's really offering something different. I've seen that from my business experience, being in the business for 27 years. That's one reason. The second reason, now it's the slide. Jay. Is really actual customer data. Um, the Commissioner Fan brought this question up earlier. And what I did is, is took a look at this, my store in Rivers Edge, New Jersey, and a store in Norwalk, Connecticut. How much business do they get on the annualized basis that come from the Westchester, Bronx, or Rockland County markets in New York? And my thought process was really is, is there a need for such a store in Westchester County? And if those consumers are looking for a unique store and living in Westchester and driving to Newark or to River's Edge, which is basically right outside of Paramus, if they're driving that distance to those areas, which is probably around a 40-minute drive, they are looking for something different. They're looking for a unique store. So I went back and added up all the sales based on credit card data. So I well, that, that, that assumption is assuming they're driving to Paramus for your store. 
I mean, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, I come from a, a very, I don't want to call it the press area of upstate New York, but you know where we shopped? Paramus. No, I, I now, it's quite natural if you're in Paramus and you happen to see one of your stores, which obviously is a very large and interesting, unique place, then you would go in and, and buy something. I mean, is your argument that they're driving to Paramus to go to your store? I think that's an excellent way of saying If I could address that, is I think there's a couple groups of people. There's a few that are driving. There's a few that are shopping like yourself in that shopping area that are making a purchase. I mean, it's a huge mall. Right, it's a huge mall. But I think what is different in my mind is usually when I look at real estate information, you see the consumers kind of like the shop close to home, usually. And so if they can. If they can. So if there is a spot close to home, my theory is having a store in Westchester will allow those consumers, instead of only once every month or every three months when they're in Paramus to shop for, at a Total Wine store, they can shop on a weekly, bi-weekly, bi-monthly basis, whatever they choose. Okay. No, but my point is they could be in Paramus shopping because they're shopping for something else that's not available at home. Yeah. I, I would certainly agree with you on that. They could be there for shopping. I don't know why they're there. I don't know their behavior. What I was just trying to present is some information to show evidence that there are consumers in Western New York County yes. that okay. like this type of shopping environment. That's, that's all the purpose of the slide. I think the and one thing that even shocked me a little further is that as mentioned earlier, both New Jersey and Connecticut have minimum price laws requiring you to sell above a certain price. So the retail pricing in those two states is actually higher than New York. So sometimes these consumers are making an illogical shopping experience going outside the state to pay more than they do in New York, which really means they're coming for the selection the service, not just the price. Or you could be ignorant like me and not know that. Okay. <laughs> Um, the, the red line on that chart, just for clarification, is kind of the, the 25 minute drive time, which shows the covering most of Westchester County, part of Rockland, and into the Bronx. It's the primary trade area. Okay. So then. Um, okay, perfect. So I think the, the other. Let me just. I'm sorry, can you clarify the red line again? Is it driving distance from the River Edge store and the Norwalk store? I apologize for leaving it on the slide. It's actually the driving distance from the Westchester store. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it's, so 25 I got my minutes. slides mixed up. That's a 25, 25 minute, minutes. A 25 minute drive time. Okay, the next two points about, you know, how do I, Mr. Mailer said that, you know what, there's a lot of stores in Westchester County. They provide everything the consumer needs. We don't need another liquor store. We don't need another wine store. My, my, my clients provide everything. I just begged a different for him on that. I don't think it's true. I think their testimony itself they are saying that they're afraid that their customers are going to be better served in my store than in their store from up to 20 miles away. Their own testimony comes up and says their letters that I'm worried that consumers are going to go shop at the store in Hartsdale. Why are they going to shop there? My proposition is they're going to stop shop in Hartsdale because they're providing convenience and advantage to the consumer in the area. So let me, and uh, on to that fact, because I think they're shopping there for other reasons as well, one of which was mentioned here, because I've seen your ads, because not yours, the one in Westbury, and looked up some of the stuff you're selling, a good portion of the stuff you're selling, and you are selling a number, if not dozens, of uh, brand name alcohol brands at six, seven cents over your cost, because I know what you're paying for them or supposed to be paying for them. So how are you able to do that to the extent that you're doing it? We're not talking about sales. I'm talking about dozens of bottles, not you, but your brother is selling dozens of brands, name brands, and he's basically making no money on them because he can't even be covering his overhead. Right, if I could, um, I really can't address how my brother thinks about Well, is that your plan? I think... My goal has always been is how do I offer a very attractive prices? Well, that, I, I, I guarantee a, a penny. That's like buying it from the wholesaler. Okay. How, how do I offer attractive prices? How do I provide a selection? Just like a supermarket, sometimes supermarkets sell turkeys a little cheaper and may not make money on turkeys, but they make money on the stuffing and the gravy and everything else. I think that almost all wine retailers do that throughout the country, certainly everyone in this room the same way, that it's the blend of the basket for the customer that makes sense. And sometimes, you know, the pricing is always going to be more attractive on those top 
five brands, ten brands, then the remaining. Well, this is way more than that. Are you doing this in other parts of the country that you base? I, and I get, I get that the point is to get the people in the store and, and for that price. I'm not, you know, if you can afford to do it, I'm just wondering how you afford to do it. I think we afford to do it by really having very high volume stores that are able to fully staff the store, the cust solving the cons customer's need and conven um, convenience and advantage, providing them that reason to come to the store and come out. You know, certainly I'm not been in business for 37 years, run a profitable business. Oh yeah, you're so, clearly making money. I'm not questioning the that. Goal is, I'm, I'm not trying to run a, a nonprofit, to be honest with you. The, um, you know, certainly, but I think the key is how do you, how do you satisfy those customers? And like me, like many other retailers, you read the papers, you know, they do offer some aggressive pricing on some high selling items. Okay. Okay. The, um, so I think the, so we talked a little bit about the people today. We talked a little bit about Nassau County, how people have indicated that, that the store at Nassau County has been very successful. I certainly, I've talked to my brother David. He's extremely pleased with his sales in Nassau County, have well exceeded his expectations, and have done very, very well. Um, what, what is that number again? Le a. A. a? Okay, I think I'll move back to you. Okay, I think you've covered it. Yeah, I okay. think you covered so it. So I think that the net of those reasons, the uniqueness of the store, my general experience, the actual customer data in Westchester where they're shopping, the testimony from the retailers in Westchester County, and the success of my brother's store really indicate to me that in the Westchester market, I will provide a unique store that will service Westchester and the four county areas in a unique way, providing public convenience and advantage to the consumers in that area and service of public, public interest. Also consistent with the 2014 amendments to the ABC law promoting economic development and job creation, the store offers extensive employment training and 100 jobs, 75% of them full-time opportunities. Um, also consistent with the amendment, Mr. Trone will speak to the agricultural preservation, production, and tourism. First, we'll go real, real quickly here, keep moving here. I said we'd have 100 employees. We'll pay good real estate taxes, so I think help fill a center that's been empty, considerable amount of sales tax and excise tax. But I think the next number I'd really like to focus on for a few seconds, is because I think it's an important number for the state of New York, is really how do those customers that are buying in Westchester today, or living in Westchester, or buying at my store in River's Edge or a Total Wine store in Connecticut, which really amounts to four and a half million dollars. If you do the math, that's somewhere around $500,000 of sales tax and excise taxes that are going to New Jersey or Connecticut that should stay in New York. So that is a significant number of how do we keep New York business in New York. Numbers could be a little, could be high, could be low. I'm not saying one way or the other. I just want to bring it up because it seems. So better. it's you're saying for, they're based on your stores in New Jersey and Connecticut. You're seeing 4.6 million a year from New York residents. Uh, I think that's that says 4.5. 4.4. Oh, mine says 4.6, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but those are New York residents buying out of state at your two other stores. That is correct, sir. No, or your the other total wines. I don't even know who owns so the other it's two. It's just those two stores, yeah. Okay. And it's just credit cards. It's not cash sales. Okay. So I think that covers that. One slide that I, I missed, let me take that one down, is really the support of the alcoholic beverage business. As Teresa said before, part of the amendment to the statute allows the commission to consider supporting the New York alcoholic beverage production industry in tourism. We talked quite a bit about selection, the 999 wines, 380 spirits, 50 ciders that are carry. One thing we haven't mentioned as much as far as what goes on in the store, I talked a little bit about staff training, which I really think is critical. If we don't chain our staff on New York wines, they're not going to sell. So I'm really involved in that. It's not only good from the consumer standpoint, but the staff likes learning about local products. It's funner to sell a local product, quite frankly, than a product out of California or Washington. So it's, it's good for the staff. <coughs> uh, dedicated displays and end caps within the store. I will focus on the wine, spirits, and cider tastings, getting local individuals in to do the tasting. We'll do classrooms. And also, in any way, I can help promote the tourism about the wineries, the cideries, and distilleries. People in the store, they find about the product. Maybe in some markets, we have little handouts for the wine trails in certain markets. We'll do the same here for New York. I think one thing that's important to say is some people say, ah, that doesn't really matter. But I really think the, we'll have sales in my store, which is a big piece. But more important, my store will provide exposure. Exposure to the 990 products, 380 spirits, and 50 ciders. That customers come in, see, touch, feel, perhaps try, but then go out, buy them at a restaurant. 
visit a winery, visit a distillery, or buy them another package store. And that's what we see in other markets when we go into Virginia that we have a wide selection of wines and Virginia wines in Virginia. That's what the producers get most excited about. It's not how many cases I'm selling, it's how many customers are touched with the product. So I really think that's going to contribute to the awareness and drive tourism and also create jobs for the wineries, distillers, great, great growers, and tourism business that benefit from an increased sales. You'll see exi exhibit Q in your binder contains letters of support that are statewide from producers. I know we've heard a lot about products, Long Island products, but Total Wine will carry New York products from across the entire state. <clears throat> the em employees that you're going to need to hire, where do they come from? Do they come from other stores? I think the vast, well, it's very difficult to get people to move in this world. Right. People like where they live. Yeah. So certainly. Um, no, I meant other stores uh, that would be your competitors. In, we certainly into. our goal is if we can hire a wine oriented individual has knowledge about the industry that's always been one of my goals so certainly as a as the stores open we encourage you know, local people that are working in wine shops to apply okay um okay we're down to okay. Fitness, right? okay we've had an opportunity to review the opposition submission and we just wanted to make a few counterpoints the applicant doesn't intend to, do, to engage in co-op buying. I know there's been a lot of talk about their national buying power. The, the applicant understands that they can get volume discounts based only on their one store. Um, Robert Trone, there was an allegation that Robert Trone lists RSSI as his employer, which is not accurate. I don't know where, where that was listed. I kinda, I, and I don't know whether I was misunderstanding um, it, but in the application, there is a reference to our RSSI as mm -hmm. his employer. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I don't know if it's the same RSSI. Okay, I think the, the explanation yeah, we, that is that was true in the past. I'm no longer employee as of I think two years ago. Okay. Oh, on your I don't past have the employment. paper. I don't know what not, I did not, with not, the, not your current the employment. Question asked for past and present employment. Right. right. And I know that we engage in conversations with the authority about RSSI and how they provide some support services on a flat fee basis and how they do not have an interest in the licensed premises. They're not empowered to make any decisions. Um, we, and we, you know, worked very closely with the authority to make sure that the services provided by our SSI would not violate um, the New York State law. Um, so, I, and I have a question. It was referred to by Mr. Mailer, yes. and I think this happened before I was even here, or didn't happen. I don't know. But is there any written thing you got from this agency that it, regarding SS, our SSI? Because he's referring to it, and we don't have anything. We never got anything from you. There were meetings and follow-up memos part, that, that we wrote. That was before my time, right? Um, I believe you were in one of it, the in one of the final meetings. With yeah. Former counsel Fluke. Fluke. Not me though. By the time at the end, it was only Council Fluke. Okay. Yeah, she's the one who negotiated the agreement with us. I wasn't familiar with, with any of it. Yeah. Okay. And then, f as part of the Westbury application, we were required to submit a signed copy of the agreement. Right. No, that yeah. I saw. Yeah. Okay. Um, many of the the letters of opposition address competition. However, as you know, the legal standard for granting a license is whether the proposed location serves some public convenience and advantage. And we would submit to you that we have provided evidence today that shows that this store would provide some public convenience and advantage. That there are some customer demands that are not being met, and that um, this would be a welcome addition to the community. If I could add one more point on character and fitness. I read this morning Mr. Mailer's presentation on my characters in fitness and after I calmed down and had a cup of orange juice instead of coffee I was a little less excited but I'm certainly happy to walk through he had many misleading statements in it some were slightly false but at the end of the day everything he dealt with it was in the past I already testified to my exemplary record in the business and my desire to really abide by all the laws in New York and I'm confident that I will do so but I'm certainly happy with the Commission to spend as much time as needed to walk through paragraph by paragraph on Mr. Mueller's submission. I'm happy to do that. I've done it before in other hearings, but in the history of my life, I've never been denied a license with the exception of Stony Brook. And, you know, so I think these... Well, that, and that wasn't, just to be clear, that was not on, on character and fitness. So I think the things that Mr. Mueller, Mr. Mueller has submitted have been submitted in countless municipalities around the country, have been reviewed by other individuals, and while look sometimes look mischievous when you read the individual paragraph, when you get to the bottom of it, there's really nothing there. But I'm more than happy to spend whatever time needed on that subject. I, I can't speak for the chairman and Commissioner Fan, but it's, it's not an issue with me. Thank you. 
Okay, the last thing that I would like Mr. Trone to speak about is just the financing for the store. I know that it was raised in the opposition papers how the store was going to be financed. Was it really going to be his store alone? So. Okay, I think that's a great point. There was a little confusion. Um, I have substantial wealth outside the company. The goal with my plan for this store is to be 100% financed either by my personal wealth, which is in a, a, a stock account, or make a commercial loan because interest rates are so low today, and that loan would be guaranteed by my, my personal bank account. So 100%, no connection to finance any other entity or any other person. But RSSI is going to be doing the same administrative stuff that it does for all of your stores? When I say all of yours, meaning yours and your brother's. I think each store, re, re, RSSI does different functions for different stores. In the store in New York, it will have lesser functions, really focusing on the bookkeeping, accounting, services in that area. But no decision making. Right, but certainly no decision making whatsoever. I'll be actively involved in. No product ordering. And if my wife worries anything, I'll be too actively involved. Say that again. My wife may worry that I'll be too actively involved. <laughs> she says, go to work, Robert, have fun. <laughs> Um, any other questions? Well, I would certainly. I, do you have any questions? I'd certainly like to thank the commission. I'm sorry I rambled on. Sometimes talked a little bit too fast. No, you didn't. Right. That's why we gave you. So the I'm going to give everybody one shot, though. So <coughs> you can, Miss Russo, you get the last word. Ms. Yes, Ms. You can come up, Mr. Slosher. Uh, do you want to speak first? You, you can, whatever you want to do. I don't care. I, uh, let me, before my mind goes completely. First of all, <laughs> this, before? <laughs> it's, uh, listen, I'm, I'm getting older. I Just this whole concept of a unique store. If this commission, if, the, if your predecessors had allowed these 21,000, 25,000 square foot stores before this, then maybe the other store could tell you I'm going to carry all of these products because I have the space to do it. Percentage-wise, these stores carry what they can carry. These stores do have the educational programs. These stores promote New York products. And just because <coughs> they're telling, and what's interesting about that, since we're going back and forth with Westbury, Westbury came before you with a straight face and said 3,500 products. Now they're carrying about 900 products. That's, about, that's, a, that's a drop of 67% from what they said they were going to carry. We were I think he probably, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to hold him to this, but I think he probably th thought there were many more out there than there were. And in this instance, he went and actually checked. So You know what? I, I would, all right, you want to give him the benefit of that? I don't. They will say whatever they have to say to try to get a license in front of you. That's what, what this is all about. Well, that's well, that's, my, that's me talking, not you, all right? Uh, that, that's my own personal No, I'm feeling. saying that that's basically my day up here every day. Okay, well, <laughs> fine. Um, with respect to competition, I never once, and I have that in my written presentation, I'm not telling this commission to, to disregard competition. Competition is healthy. Competition is what it's all about. Competition is what you have these, these stores and every other store in, in Westchester County uh, uh, dealing with. When you have a predator that comes into the area where he's selling volumes of, of uh, national brands at cost or at below cost, these guys can't compete with that. They can't even order and get the product at, 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 the, at the same prices that they can get because they can get quantity discounts that these, that, that these individuals uh, can't afford to even go into. So there's a vast difference between competition and being a predator. Luring somebody into your store on the premise of buying a national brand and then training. Yes, they do train their, their, uh, their personnel. They train their personnel to walk away to have you walk away from the national brand and onto their products. You ask how they make money, I'll tell you how they make money. They make 50% markups on those off brands. I can't, I, I, I will not say directly, but how about uh, they make a deal in Maryland or they make a deal in. Uh, well, that, now we're speculating, okay, no, so I'm not going to get into that. I, I mean, you want to know, you want to. I have no, you know, I, we don't have any jurisdiction in Maryland, and I'm not telling you that's right, wrong. It probably is very wrong. But we can't speculate here today. That's I, for sure. I, okay. Then enough said about about other stores and other and other and other states. Uh, but let, let's get down to what was said the last time they were here. I, I asked them to keep this. Uh, when you say the last time they're here, you're talking about Stony, Stony, Brook? Stony Brook. I'm talking about Stony Brook. When we were talking, when they were talking about Stony Brook, they were saying how people will be coming down from ferry boats uh, into their store into um, into Long Island. Now all of a sudden, I, I don't recall that. Well, I, I, can, I can give you the. <laughs> no, if you need it. Um, now, now we're talking about an area, and by the way, they're also saying they're going to be a local store, a local store encompassing 
uh, Connecticut, Westchester, uh, Rockland County. That's one hell of a local area, uh, and, and they're, going, they're going to know all of their uh, their customers. They, uh, Mr. Trone had trouble remembering my name. I mean, he's going to remember the names of. Uh, of, uh, I of thought that was customers. on purpose. Well, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But if it's any indication of how he treats his customers, he's got a little bit of a problem. But th th forget about me. I, I, uh, I don't count for anything here. Um, <laughs> you want me to respond? Again, <laughs> again, again, uh, that that twenty mile area, the thirty mile area, when when David Tron, uh, I mean, yes, when David Tron was speaking, he was including Westchester County in his twenty and thirty mile area. He was certainly including. Um, uh, New Jersey. <coughs> so all of a sudden, it's just Westchester. It's just Rockland. But it's more than just Westchester and Lock Rockland. It's, it's a vast part of Connecticut. And they have a store in Connecticut. And now they're saying people are going over the border because they have minimum prices. And by the way, for somebody who doesn't break the law, why don't you ask Connecticut about them going on television and radio and saying how this, this minimum uh, pricing is ridiculous and we're going to deliberately, deliberately break the law to see if we can change it. So they're not, they're not, they're not what they claim to be. Um, existing stores go. Oh, you talk about you talk about uh, asking how many uh, employees they're going to hire. If we take 200 stores in in Westchester, and each one of them just loses one employee, that's 200 jobs lost. And that, not to mention the fact that they're going to lose even more. Not to mention the fact that stores may go out of business, and those stores will become empty. Uh, this this is a total disaster. With respect to them claiming, making these claims about uh, taxes being added to the state of New York, <coughs> you correctly pointed out to David Trump when he made that very same presentation that that's not something to be considered. And I can give you case law saying, well, that's not to be considered. But you, 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 you said it with, with David Trump, so I, I leave it to that. Again, if I had a store, if any one of these people here had a store 21,000 square feet, they could make claims of a lot more SKUs. They could make uh, claims of introducing a lot more product. The point is, these people are in the area. These people know their customers. These people know what their customers want. And for, for, to make a claim that they'll all come in because of bright lights or whatever else this thing may claim, that's nonsense. They'll walk in the door because you see ads like this that they, that they're, that they, that they have throughout, at least now through the Nassau County area, showing that they're selling at or below cost. They're selling below the cost of, of, of what it cost uh, the, um, what the, uh, the local wineries are even selling their product for. And while we're on that subject, they said, gee, that we're, we're going to increase the, um, the, the tourism to other, uh, to other areas, including the wineries out east. Well, OK, now all of a sudden, the people that weren't going across uh, the, these, um, these uh, uh, boundaries, so to speak, are now getting in their cars and going all the way to the end of Long Island because, because of what Total just told you is going to happen. Nonsense, absolute nonsense. They, I, I uh, okay, believe. Mr. Mel, it was a short summation I was giving you. Not well, I, but I mean, they, they said so many things that I, I um, well, shouted. Well, can't respond to everyone. So all right, well, so. all right, just then, then let, me, let me end with this. Because I, I was going to say something about charity. All, all these people represent their, their Little League teams. And, and, and with, that's them. all been said. All right. Um, um, one second. I just, I just, I, I, I cannot believe that they can just, with, with, no, with no sense of hesitation. Oh, that's another thing. They, 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 sort of, they sort of hesitated with you in terms of how do you make any money. And I just explained how they make money. I knew how they do, too. I'm, you know. All right, OK, me. so then you know what? I, 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 I trust made it your clear judgment. that, I mean, they have their own products. We know that. So I, 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 I trust your judgment to understand that what. But what there's nothing saying. illegal about that either. I didn't say there's anything illegal about having a product in a store as long as other people can also get that product. There, there, there's such a thing as a private brand, but they're not talking about private brands. They're talking about uh, products that they're trying to push, and uh, and uh, all of a sudden they make their profit of 50 percent because because they can push that product because they've they've educated their their uh, employees to to move in that direction. This store is not needed in in the state in the um, county of Westchester. This store. Is just a, a duplicate of the store in uh, in Westbury. They're not carrying anything unique. They're not a destination store, and I would ask that this application not be approved. Thank you. Thank you. The way he just has one. He, he, I'm gonna, I'm just going to let him respond to the real estate agent because <coughs> I believe it was the landlord himself. But um, all right, it was a landlord. The ch Mr. Chairman, you were correct regarding the timing of um, my client being informed that her lease. Uh, 
is no longer extant, according to, to the landlord. The application was filed, I believe, sometime in, sometime in September, October. November was the No, first. no, this, this application was filed in August. Right. Correct, Jackie? It, regardless, my client's first notice from their landlord that uh, their lease was being terminated was November. Um, and then they received a second notice in December. Well, I think the interesting thing was that she had not indicated that she wanted to renew. Is that fair to say? Is that well, true? Um, it's not <coughs> entirely accurate. Mr. Uh, the, Mr. Bender, I believe his name is, said that there was, quote, unquote, no attempt to exercise. We're dealing with lay people who are, um, who are not necessarily sophisticated in terms of real estate. Um, and they were dealing with a very sophisticated national landlord. So I believe that the landlord is elevating form over substance. And there will well, be the So what was the that, substance? The substance was that they, they do and did want to renew. And then how did the they, how did they, in what form did they relay that to the landlord? There were emails between representatives of um, Hartsdale Wine and Bricksmore. Okay. Um, can produce them if need be. So that, uh, at the end of the day, he disagrees with you. I don't but need yeah, to hear Yeah, he, he disagrees yeah. with the timeliness and, and everything else. Okay. Um, but, but Ms. Jacopelli is prepared to stay, and if not, prepared to make a petition to remove uh, to, a, to a nearby location. Okay. And yes, I did, I did personally contact a, a landlord's representative to see if something could be worked out, but uh, not the approach that I received was, let's see what happens with Total Wine. So here we are. Um, <coughs> And oh. he, he didn't say anything different no, than that, 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 really. That, that, that's it. I mean, he, he was being completely upfront with you. But certainly the prospect of replacing a 2,100 square foot uh, tenant with a tenant that's literally 10 times the size is, uh, I understand, very enticing. Okay. Uh, but we believe that. Are you uh, saying that uh, your uh, client didn't make any, uh, <clears throat> any indication of her intent to stay until being told? No, 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 no. No, they, no, no. There, there was. Uh, I, I, I believe it was May of twenty May of May, May of May of seventeen. There was May, an email there was, sent. There was there were some communications, and uh, they've been operating there without an, any <coughs> anything to the contrary that there's that they're a valid tenant. There. But so it's fair to say that the lease had specific ways that that was supposed to be done in a time frame that was supposed to be done, and that was not done. That that's con that that's conceded because I can't say different. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> but like I said, there are there are defenses. Okay. Th yeah. Of course. I'm not going to litigate that here. That no, we got sir, enough. Sir, we got sir. enough going on. <laughs> w one last thing. If you look at the Total Wine website, you see top countries and states. You see 11 thing, 11 states and countries listed. After Oregon and Germany, uh, you don't even have New York. It's not one of the top 11. Well, they only got one store here, so that makes sense. <laughs> that, that website is not a New York website. That's Thank you. That's a national website. Um, the only additional point I want to make on the trade area is that other national retailers agree that Westbury and Westchester are two completely different trade areas by evidence that they have the same national chains in the two areas. I don't know that I would dis malls. I don't know that I would disagree with that. I'm just saying th this whole thing goes around the argument that his brother made when he came in here. And it, that right. that's where, and maybe it was. And now we have experience. So and may, yeah, I maybe that was an that over point. an overstatement at that time. But that's what everyone's going back to, right. including myself. That's right. And I think that that was just you know what he thought was going to happen. And now that he has over a year of experience, we have. Some or going back to said what he wanted me to hear. <laughs> but so, go ahead. So most of the arguments that we heard today were all based on competition, which, as you know, is not the standard. I think that we've provided some good arguments that the demand is there. The demand is there with customers going to other states to purchase alcohol, and that um, our store is providing something very unique, and that the, the retailers in the area really just it's an anti-competition argument. There was a concerted effort. There was a lobbying effort. There were, you know, a number of letters that went out and a negative campaign. Well, I mean, and have you, is this your third? Did, were you on the first one as well? So I think we can say that, that and I, it could be because of lobbying. It, it may not be. I, I, I'm not going to judge that. But the, the le level of opposition from uh, local electeds, in my estimation, is unprecedented. Yeah, I think the package store association really just had, you know. Well, I mean, they're, they don't generally sign on to things that they don't want to sign on to. Um, but I'm just pointing that out. That, And I'm the, the first one to tell them they're wrong. That's right. So. And most of the producers did write letters in support for us because they You did they get understand. support, yes. And, and some elected support as well. That's right. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. You all ready to vote?
Yeah. Does that, well, you're, as the president of the association, you can, yes. Is there any other association <coughs> presidents here that want to say anything? Jeff Saunders, president of the Retailers Alliance, talking as a retail store owner. Um, Commissioner, to answer your question as to where are they going to get their help from, you all have documentation from the stores in Westbury that they've had a fire help and reduce helps hours. So whether he's going to hire 100 brand new wine geeks, you're still going to have a lot of people out of a job. So to me, in the gates, probably more on the negative side of people without work. And that's just what's going to happen. It's in your folders. Um, the second thing, <clears throat> Marty says you have it. But I just want to bring the point up that when you have one store in Westbury down $6 million, you have in your folder three of the largest stores in Westbury down 46 to 49 percent. That's major, major volume. And I know stores outside of the Westbury area also down major, major volume. So when you're down volume, God didn't create people to come in and into your store. Those people are going to be, and to answer your question, um, Chairman, has anyone um, closed? I would say as of right now, no, but after Christmas, I guarantee they can't survive. Not going to happen. Okay, so we're just trading here, and you're losing people's jobs and whatnot. A um, couple other things. And, and I'm just wondering, this New York wine stuff, are we playing this card up too much? So the only thing, uh, can we just not go through what we already went through? No, I don't want to do that. Uh, no, I, no, no, but we've, all, we've dealt with every of these issues. Do you have anything to add? Please add it. But yeah, okay. So what I They want to sell New York wine, and I, I, we, we get that issue. We got it. I understand. I would just love to see, to see what they actually sold of it. That's my point. Well, that we they don't. all claim we have it. Is that a is that a get a license free card? Yeah, we'll take a thousand in. But what's the actual depletion? Okay. And my last point, which is the point I wanted to say, it's always been the stand of the state liquor authority that we have an even playing field. For all the commissioners and chairmen that I've been in front of over the thirty years, the common denominator is a level playing field. So if I open a 20,000-square-foot store called McCabe's, beautiful, and Bradley opens up a 20,000-square-foot store called Bradley's, beautiful, even playing field. We'll do business based on our merits. When I open up McCabe's and Total Wine opens up next to me, being a chain store, not an even playing field. He's doing business right off the bat. I'm done. And that was my point. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carrera, you can have <coughs> Ms. Russo, you can respond to them if you want, but that's it after that. Just have a quick statement. Thank you, Chairman, Commissioners, members of the authority. My name is Michael Carrera. I'm the Executive Director of Metropolitan Package Store Association. Metro members of the retail wine and liquor stores that line our shopping districts in the five boroughs, Long Island, Westchester, and Rockland. They remain one of the few constants in these communities and are true active community participants. Many owners live near their store, including myself. As you can see from the huge number of stores, owners were here, who wanted to be here today, in, in the middle of the hectic holiday season. Metro's members and non-members and all store owners rightly believe that granting the license application would destroy a large amount of those businesses throughout downstate New York. Metro believes that there is no need for a mega store in Hartsdale, Westchester County, or frankly anywhere in downstate New York. The area is saturated with over 2,000 package stores, a 20,000 square foot store that engages in selling at or below cost will only take away from existing stores consumers, not attract new ones. A company that engages in completely undercutting competition before at selling cost, below cost, targeting a 50 mile store radius of destruction pushing their own brands, monopolizing wholesales will ultimately be bad for the multi-billion dollar wine and spirits industry. Like the Westbury Total is already doing, a second store downstate will push many stores in Westchester and the surrounding communities first to layoffs and then out of business. These areas are already well served by the existing liquor stores. In addition, it will cost the state a significant amount of jobs, 
not just retail, as many union and non-union employees, truck drivers, sales reps for wines and spirits, people working in warehouses will eventually be unemployed. See what has happened in other states. Ask the sales representatives union here who's here today about what's occurring. The Westbury store has not added new stores, new sales. As a matter of fact, a large radius around the store is suffering. The surrounding stores are not generating any revenue for the salespeople because the surrounding liquor store's revenues are down. It's a net loss. Finally, Metro members and non-members across downstate New York have always embraced homegrown New York products. Personally, my Br Brooklyn Heights liquor store proudly carries hundreds of SKUs of New York products. We all have embraced the governor's initiative of New York State wine, cideries, and distilleries. We've attended the summits and embraced supporting our fellow New York State businesses. From, from 2014 to 2017, as per governor's report, there's 35 new cideries, 60 new wineries, and 67 new distilleries. Since 1976, when there was only six wineries, there's almost 1,000 now in New York State. Our stores have been supporting New York State products well before Total came to New York. We, I might add, sold these at a profit that our business partners encouraged, not at or below cost. Metro members are committed and non-members are committed to continually carrying New York products. We have more passion to carry homegrown wine spirits because we are New Yorkers and we've owned it. Coming issues on behalf of all package stores in New York and the need for a fair and balanced uh, market, I urge you to reject this application. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Do you need? Members, I yeah. have somebody in Albany that would like to speak. Who is it? Who is it? Yep, uh, president of the New York State Liquor Store Association, something quick. Uh, don't repeat what I just heard, please. Stay there, Ms. Russo. You're not going anywhere. Okay, uh, quick quick thing. Um, about corporations moving into New York, family members operating the same thing. We just had that deal in upstate New York. For example, Wegmans. They told the Liquor Authority they won't work in cahoots. We found out a few weeks ago that they do work in cahoots. One makes total wine, not working to boots. They have corporations behind them, different payroll companies working together. What makes them think that they're not going to do the same thing that Wegmans did? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to quickly respond to whether the West Bay store is actually promoting and selling New York State products. And in the last 12 months, they've sold 15,000 cases of New York State wine. So that's and very significant. How many? 15,000 cases. Thank you. Are the members ready to vote? Before we vote, I do want to thank, one, everybody for keeping their composure. I realize that was extremely difficult. And both uh, lawyers for, I mean, this is the most information I've ever gotten on anything. Um, and I, I do not hesitate to tell you how long it took me to read it all. And I'm sure the other two commissioners have read it all either. So I appreciate that. Um, which is why we didn't have a lot of questions, I think, because basically you answered every question I had in your papers. <clears throat> so then I guess we can vote. All right. Commissioner Fan. Also want to acknowledge that, that we received 420 letters of opposition, 32 letters of opposition from electeds, and probably countless letters to electeds, versus there were 30 letters of support um, for this application. And I always say when there's a lot of protests, that means there's a lot at stake here, and we definitely realize that. Um, I think this is very basic. In the end, you know, we we'll go back to numbers for the four closest stores, um, and um, I don't really see enough increase to justify yet another store. Um, there is a store as of right now within 400 feet, which is very significant. Um, we have heard information about how this store may close, but um, as of right now, it's still there. Um, I agree with um, the information that there's a lot of potential job loss, and that probably will outweigh the jobs that are gained by opening the store. Um, I do believe that the applicant is very, very qualified and experienced in this area. However, he's not a New York resident, and I um, think that 
it's hard to be local if you're not local. And so, um, as I mentioned before, 0.009% of the sale right now on the website is New York products. So, um, platform that exists is not really being used to promote, promote New York products. Um, we're 27 miles from Norwalk, 30 miles from River Edge, 40 miles to Westbury, and so forth. A mega store, IKEA type experience, I would say that um, we're close enough to those three stores. And because of that, I vote to deny this application. Commissioner Ford. Uh, <clears throat> I looked back at the, some of the other uh, applications in the area that have come before us, and uh, we have denied them simply based on uh, public convenience and advantage is, is already being met. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, this store is uh, a little bit further away uh, than the original second application was. Uh, Mr. Mailer, I think you said it was something like 20 something miles, 21 by helicopter. So, you know, uh, to Mr. Trone's point, driving wise, it's more like 35, 36 miles. So I'm not sure that's uh, uh, an issue here. But uh, for the reason I think that uh, there's already enough stores in the area, I think there's something like 200 stores in Westchester County. I, I just think that's enough at this point with all I've heard, and uh, I'm going to vote to deny. Chairman Bradley. I'm going to. Um I agree with Commissioner Fan on, the, on the many of the factors that th this store would actually double the size of square feet of liquor store within about two mile radius. More than, um, more than double the, the existing. And, and the sales of not just the closest five stores, but as Mr. Mailer pointed out, when he went beyond that, this, the sales of even further out beyond two miles um, are not it would be lucky to call them flat, um, if not trending down. Um, there's been no, you know, there has been an increase, it looks like, in population, but the increase in population is not significant. It's, it looks like it's about 3% over eight-year period, which to me is not significant at all. There's been no increase in development that would be significant that would lead me to believe that there is an increase in demand for particularly a store of this size. Um, the elected opposition, as I pointed out, is unprecedented, and that we, you know, I don't, I, I do take their, their position under advisement. I don't always agree with them, but never have I had this much on one side of an issue. And we have denied a significant number of stores in this general area um, over the past couple of years for this exact reason, the public convenience and advantage, one of which was a 20,000 square foot store, which arguably is in a better area than this one as far as saturation goes uh, in Rockland County. So as, as uh, Mr. Trump pointed out, there's a 20 minute bullseye of trade area here. And in my mind, the sales numbers within that 20 minute bullseye of trade area don't indicate an increase in demand in alcohol. And while he's a great candidate, regardless of, of the history Mr. Miller may have brought up, I think you know his family is obviously devoted to this industry and has been for decades. And the store itself does have significant services, some of which are not provided by other stores, such as the fact that they would have 9,000 SKUs. I do not see that there's enough public convenience and advantage to put a store this size in the middle of Westchester County. So I'm going to vote to deny. All right. Chairman Bradley, uh, excuse me, no. Chairman Bradley, you have anything else from the meeting? All right. We're adjourned. <laughs>